Now, new at six, a Houston man charged with kidnapping a woman and holding her against her will for four years. The alleged victim managed to text police using the suspect's laptop. That woman telling police she was panhandling and pregnant when Lee Carter gave her her ride to his home, then locked her in his attached garage. The woman says at one point she managed to text police who took her to the hospital. She was then released back to Lee Carter. This latest attempt to reach out to police resulted in her pressing charges. Carter is now in custody, charged with aggravated kidnapping. I'm Jill Oh, 
spicy banana, tasty banana. Put it in your mouth and squeeze. Put it in your mouth put and squeeze. Your mouth. Just put it in your mouth. Just put it in your mouth. Just put it in your mouth. Tasty banana. Do a begathon where it took me and do this and do that. We're not doing that. It's business as usual here on DSP Gaming. We play games, we have fun. If you guys like it, you support it. The week is going slow. Tough through it. So how are you doing? This is how I'm doing. Tips very low now. But I've noticed tips very low right now. The week is going slow. It gets to me. My life is ruined. This is how I'm doing. The losers out there thinks that they know shit. Kiss my fucking ass and eat my shit. Right now, a full I'm podcast drinking. book, full gameplay streams book. Everything's book. Everything's book. Everything's book. Can't do anything crazy. The chap is And I don't even have enough to buy groceries. It sucks. Meerkat Mall. The week is going slow. Tough through it. So how are you doing? This is how I'm doing. Tips very low now. But I've noticed tips very low right now. The week is going slow. It gets to me. My life is ruined. This is how I'm doing. The losers out there. Thinks that they know shit. Kiss my fucking ass and eat my shit right now. So how are you doing? This is how I'm doing. So how are you doing? This is how I'm doing. So how are you doing? This is how I'm doing. So how are you doing? This is how I'm doing. Hey, stupid, I have depression, you dumb fuck. I actually have it. I know what it feels like, all right? So if you disappeared today, no one would care. I have depression. I know what it feels like. I actually have it. Dumb fuck. I know what it feels like. Slow day, all day, I'm depressed. Record low views, thumbs down, I'm depressed. I have depression. I have depression. Whale tail, I'm drinking and I'm thinking. But I have this nagging in the back of my head that's telling me you're a loser. You have no power over anyone on this planet. The epitome of a waste of life. Hey, stupid. I have depression. I know what it feels like. I actually have it. You dumb fuck. I know what it feels like. Slow day, all day. I'm depressed. Record low views. Thumbs down. I'm depressed. I have depression. I have depression. I have depression. I know what it feels like. I actually have it. <laughs> I know what it feels like. Motherfucker! Slow day, all day. Fuck all you hoes! Record low views. Thumbs down on the press. I'm drinking. I have depression. I have depression. Back up, you stupid loser. You think you know anything about anything in real fucking life? You know nothing. Hey, hey, hey. Hype, 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 hype. This is the hype stream that makes fun of Dark Side Phil. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, this is the 
worst fucking uncle. <laughs> Gold. <laughs> oh fuck. I'm dying. Oh, what's up everybody? We're back. Are we? Okay. Yes, we are back. We're back. Welcome everybody. This is another stream. Watching fucking Dark Side Phil, making fun of him and being stupid and all around. Um, super high quality, meaningful content for the masses. This is mass produced content for the average viewer and the true DSP fans. Uh, big ups, everybody, for watching. Let's d dive right into it. Uh, thank you for the membership, Nose Vacuum. And uh, big ups for the sub, Unoffended Gamer. I guess we got a couple of stuff to go over uh, since there's going to be probably an hour until the guy actually exists in, in his form of existence, which is. As you know, uh, producing high quality curated content. So let's see what we get. Let's see what we're going to go over. And uh, the, the high quality meaningful stuff. Let me first get rid of the cursor. Okay. Okay. And then it got fucked up. Fantastic. Already off to a fantastic start. Okay, we got it. Even though my, my layout is a little bit scuffed because I was playing around with... Uh, with a capture card today, because if the React is boring as shit, I'm just gonna turn on the Xbox. Because I'm a gamer, and we're gonna be gaming. First, let's uh, take a trip down memory lane and go to the DSP throwback channel, which for some reason popped up very quickly on my search. Maybe it's back in the algorithm, you guys. Maybe this channel is gonna be the one that's gonna get him back to prominence. So first, of course, he needs feedback. Uh, this is the channel update that we've all been waiting for, and it dropped 12 hours ago. We actually did a live react to this on TBS that just ended like 10 minutes ago, so you can go check it out. It was a very fun time. And uh, what else do we have on this channel? We got the Final Fantasy playthrough that just dropped 23 minutes ago. Dude, it's it's hot. It's it's right out the... Uh, how do you call it? The upscaling machine, dude. Look at this hot content. Let's turn this up to... 1440p. Oh my god, this is gonna be so good. Look at this quality. I this is an optional room or what? What's this down here? This is probably. Oh my god, the ghosting is terrible. I've already been here. Right, the, uh, the one thing that is actually better in these videos is the audio because it doesn't have all the ambient, terrible noise. But the video, man, like, how do you even watch this? This is What's incredible ghost. Look. Incredible. We are the dancing little red guys. Absolutely so terrible. And, uh, okay, what else do we have on this channel? A bunch of videos like this in the DSP throwback official relaunch announcement, you guys, which is at 3.5 thousand views and climbing. Uh, but the likes and dislikes are not looking very good. As you can see, the ratio is very juicy in the favor of the I dislike this crowd because. They're damn dirty detractors. They don't deserve anything. They don't deserve the high-quality upscaled content. So what do we got here? Uh, we got a nice first frame of Phil clearly uh, starting the recording in OBS. He is wearing the nice medieval peasant-style shirt that makes him look um, definitely from the past, which kind of fits the theme of the channel. So in this case, I'm going to give him a, a thumbs up, a huge shout-out for uh, considering his wardrobe and wearing something that is thematic. Hello boyfriend. Who would look better upscaled? Cat, panda, or the fridge? Cat upscaled mm. her weight already, so she's ahead of the curve. Well, yeah, that, that's the thing with Cat, because I would say if she was any more upscaled, you would need to film her in IMAX. So Cat is kind of, you know, we... We're not, we're not considering that as a real answer. I would say the fridge, because the fridge was telling me things that I really like, man. The, the fridge was really working on me and had a very positive influence. So I don't even know what I'm going to watch. Are we going to watch the DSP throwback official relaunch announcement? He's going to say all the stuff we already know he's going to say. So this is the KO Gaming channel. As you can see, there's a bunch of prior videos that have existed. Some of the popular videos include... The worst game he's ever played, Home From the Revolution, that got over a million views, which is amazing. Then we got uh, Shitting on No Man's Sky, which got 122,000 views and climbing. And then we have Mirror's Edge Catalyst, 
that also got 103,000 views and climbing over the seven years it's been existing. So overall, very good videos, very good views. They're all climbing. Huge, huge success. And uh, as you can see, the thumbnails are also very inspired. In all of them, he is making a very particular face that only he could make. I couldn't even make this face if I actually tried, dude. Can you go back to the beg that is a semi-recent video on this channel? Um, sure. Let's see what else he put out before this. Is it this one? No, it's not this one. This is a pre-stream from August 7, 2018. And the pre-streams back then used to be about an hour long. As you can see here, we got another one that is one hour and four minutes. We got one that is one hour 16. So this was basically the pre-stream podcast before it was the pre-stream podcast, before it was the level one podcast, before it was... Uh, whatever it is today. Uh, so let's actually check out the first ever emergency video that shows up here. There we go. My future on YouTube is at stake. Please support. I love those videos. These are just classic timeless DSP videos you can just watch all the time. You can make a playlist of all the DSP alerts videos and just watch them as you're falling asleep at night. It's fantastic. All right, what is going on, everyone? Phil here. And this is a special video for this is a those special of you who video. are watching my videos on YouTube, okay? Uh, those who are still watching all of my classic videos on DSP Gaming on a daily basis, you know, eight years of work that I put on that channel. And for those of you who have transitioned... Meerkat looking like freshly made hot chocolate with whipped cream on top line. Thanks. Are you going to drop a throwback <laughs> channel with a few more seconds added to your songs? Uh, he should. Yeah, DSP Music. Or DSP Records, that's how it should be called. And he's just going to upload other people's videos and uh, beg for you to go listen to him. <laughs> that's the future of, uh, of YouTube, you guys. Come on, he needs to branch out. He's going to be a podcaster, a record label owner, um, on-demand video creator. Think about it, he's going to be just like me. Wow, that's an interesting thought. I can't wait. Last week to my other YouTube channel, KO Gaming, so that you could continue to watch the ongoing play. But this is the, the YouTube channel, the other since channel. DSP Gaming ran into trouble in the last week and was demonetized. All right. For those who want to know, the, the news is not good. The news is very grim. Um, AdSense, Google AdSense, has not responded to my uh, appeal to try to get DSP Gaming remonetized. Yes, and if you're really curious about the process of applying and disputing whatever happened you can go check it out in this trilogy of videos so we got dsp gaming emergency live stream part one the explanation then we got part two no that's not it that's another emergency video that's the that's oh no that's part three that's him figuring it out because you can see the the motions <laughs> this shit is so fucking stupid man this channel has so much trash on it look at this, this is all fucking random junk Mini montage, we got marathon montage, we got reviews, we got whole ass playthroughs, we got everything. Because at some point, he was so desperate to have a channel that he could monetize that he would just fucking throw everything at one place. And then we go back and forth, back and forth, and now we're back here. And now we're doing upscaled, remastered, reimagined, recreated uh, amazing videos from 2010. So there we go, with this uh, fantastic... I, th I think I showed this on the last stream. This is some terrible fucking artwork, man. I, I hate this shit. <laughs> uh, so yeah, let's see this uh, the future being at stake. And uh, creator support, which is the helpline for YouTube, is literally just kind of under the impression that we can't do anything until we get a yes or no answer from AdSense. And we haven't gotten a yes or no answer. AdSense has literally just ignored me. Nope, super and panic. I don't have a direct line of contact. And of course, uh, I think... You know what? I think I know why he wears the black shirt in the begging videos. So he doesn't uh so he doesn't come across as distracting because like this is a dude who is super panicked and is making the the big, you know, bug eyes and at the same time he's wearing a a nice little gaming shirt that's like what is this a Mario shirt? Yeah, it's a Super Mario shirt that says feel the something. Is it feel the sunshine something like that? But I don't know and it's very distracting. So that's why he's wearing the black shirt, so he doesn't take away your attention from the topic at hand, which is uh, him needing money or something bad happened to him. Alert. Would an IMAX card fart be the same level of quality as the same level of quality of the Oppenheimer atomic bomb <laughs> testing scene? Sound waves included. I, I, I guess, yes. I was more imagining like cat jumping into a pool 
and then the ripple would feel like the the Oppenheimer scene with the sound waves included and everything. Why do you think Ked got DSP an old women sweater? Uh, because uh, it didn't fit her, so she just passed it along. It's kind of like a charity, you know. She donated the shirt to him. Talk to besides submit this form and just hope that you get a response. It's been a week. I've gotten no response. So right now things are grim when it comes to me. And things are grim. Eight years of work on DSP gaming, I cannot monetize anymore. I mean, it's great, and I want to say thank you to those of you who have transitioned over to KO Gaming in the last week. Um, those videos are monetized, and if you guys haven't noticed, but wait, videos... this this is supposed to be KO Gaming. So this is this a video for DSP Gaming that he uploaded to KO Gaming because he could monetize it? I, I'm so confused because he's talking about KO Gaming like it's it's a different channel, but this video is on KO Gaming, even though now it's called DSP Throwback. I understand if you would be confused because this is definitely confusing. And of course, this is the fantastic description. I want to let the bot read this because it's always funny when the bot reads stuff. As a 10-year content creator on YouTube, I've never faced an issue like this. If you are a fan of mine and want to see me continue to create daily gaming content on this website, please watch this video, and after you do, please step up and support my efforts in one of the ways below. Fantastic, thank you, bot. And this uh, falls into a sub subgenre of videos on YouTube that is called somebody complaining about ads or monetization, which there's a lot of those videos that many, many creators have made and some of them make me sympathize with them. And the other ones are just people that are entitled to making money off YouTube. Uh, so in basically this case. Videos aren't very long. I'm now putting out very long videos on a daily basis. Instead of the old 10 minute parts I used to do on DSP Gaming, the videos on KO Gaming are like one, two hours long, which is what you- He is super have, rattled in this video. This is, this is the kind of content I like to see him just in a super schizophrenic mood. And just like doesn't know what to do. We're flailing all over the place. We're just looking all around. You got the nice love seat in the background. I really miss the love seat. Because, you know, the, the new Gamer Baby booster seat, it doesn't just hit the spot as well as, as this did. Because imagine him sitting on a love seat wearing the, the neck phones toilet seat on his, on his neck. Uh, wearing a vest and a hat. That would look so good. You said just make long gameplay videos that are more archives of your streams rather than these ridiculously short parts. So I'm doing exactly what you want and I'm trying to make it so that those who still like my YouTube videos and watching my content on YouTube can still watch it. But I'm going to be very upfront and honest with you guys. I need your help. If you guys want to continue to see me <laughs> upload videos. To wow, dude. I'm oh, oh wow. I skipped this too much. I, I, I'm surprised that Phil made a video where he needs people's help. He's not, like, I'm not used to him doing that. He's usually the guy who never needs help, right? More followers, more viewers, you know, on average, and the support. This month, the month of July, was amazing. It was one of the best, uh, uh, most supportive uh, months I've ever had on Twitch, but... <laughs> and he uh, gives the thumbs up, and it's uh, the, the tiny Twitch, little but... underdeveloped Salvano thumb. Yeah. I love his fucking thumbs. They're so weird. This dude, like, he's just so weird in general. Everything about him is weird. There's not a single thing that he does that is not weird. Making nothing on YouTube. See what I mean? Well, I want to. I want to see the thumbs up. And grease build up that we never saw. Do you think was on the love seat? It had to look like a cracked end sofa. Well, I I don't know. I would imagine that this love seat was originally white, and yeah, you can see how it is now. So that that answers your question, Vikes. Something's got to give. And something's got to give and that's you you got to give so head over to patreon.com slash dark or leave him a tip using muxy the thing that he no longer uses because at some point people found out a way uh, to send him fake tips so they were sending him like a thousand dollars tips and he was super confused and it really it really didn't affect them very well or you can buy something from his teespring store uh, you know what? I actually want to do that. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, it sends me to the main page. That's that's weird. What happened to his Teespring store? Well, I guess we'll never know, you guys. It's probably some glitch. For 10 years, I've been a content creator on YouTube for 10 years, even though this last year my revenue did completely dramatically drop on YouTube because of the YouTube apocalypse. I still continue to consistently upload videos for wow. you guys on YouTube. There's nobody. Like, I've actually never seen a YouTuber or online personality 
who kisses his own ass as much as DSP. Like this dude, his entire existence is just advertising how great he is to you and how much you need to support him because he's so fucking amazing. YouTube, especially those of you who say, man, Phil, you know, I can't watch your videos on Twitch because it's too much. The bandwidth limitations are too high. If I try to watch any video on, on Twitch, you know, it just chops up and I can't watch it, but I can watch your stuff on YouTube. So please keep uploading. Like his whole fucking, his whole gimmick is just being a shout out to himself. It's like, oh, you guys, shout out to me for uh, putting out consistent and awesome videos every single day. Okay. And the crazy thing is that there are plenty of people, or at least at the time in 2018, there were plenty of people to compliment him. It's not like he was starved from attention or compliments or people kissing his ass. There were plenty of them around. He was getting a, a bunch of views on Twitch or whatever the fuck. He was getting way more views than nowadays. But still, he feels the need to just, like, tell you how amazing he is. And it's not even, like, in a roundabout way where he kind of implies it. He just straight up tells you, hey, you guys, I've been so fucking great. But what I'm kind of telling you guys now is I need to make a living and I'm making nothing on the <laughs> This also, this is a great GIF. If you want to make this into a GIF, it's fucking great. Look at this. I'm kind of telling you guys the nothing with these cool crazy guy eyes with the psycho eyes. Look at this. Now is I need to make a living and I'm making nothing on And he made it like a Fortnite emote. It's like the nothing emote. If you want to, <laughs> if you want to, if, if somebody you kill had zero kills and you want to like dunk on them and teabag them that's the emote you play it's like nothing you got zero kills that's what you got gugats on the youtube videos so what this means is that i need you guys who are avid watchers who are longtime fans of mine and who love my youtube content to please step up and support the effort how the primary way you can is to go to my <laughs> patreon patreon.com dude i want more videos like this this is a fucking classic video. This is better than any other classic video that he's ever going to upload on DSP Throwback. This is him at his most, like, unhinged form. Forward slash dark side is he just straight up just begging? He's just straight up begging. There's nothing in between. He's just up front with it. Hey, what's up, you guys? This is a begging video. Give me money. Now. Something's gotta give. That's my favorite quote from this video. Something's gotta give. Well, guess which is that something? That's you. And pledge today. <laughs> and again, this this is just bangers on bangers, man. They don't make these like like this anymore. Pledge today. <laughs> the primary way you can is to go to my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash dark side Phil and pledge today. It's a dollar helps, okay? It's such a cool like performative thing. It's kind of the same way that wrestlers would say it. He wouldn't just be like like I said, this kind of video is a subgenre of YouTube where people complain about being demonetized or they can't make enough money or they can't make the money that they want to make. Uh, but some of them, they, they just address it in kind of a normal person way, you know? They sit there and they're like, well, this and this happened, you know, YouTube monetization things, they just changed around and I can't make this content anymore. It's not viable for me. They say it like a normal person. And this dude, he's putting on a fucking sympathy promo like he's in a WWE, dude. I've been saying this ever since I opened my Patreon three years ago. People are like, oh, I can't make a significant impact. A dollar a month actually helps and adds up, all right? Yeah, but only if a lot of other people also pledge a dollar a month. If it was like five people, it probably wouldn't add up. Well, technically it does add up, but it, it you know, you know, it doesn't cut it. The bottom line is if you look at the amount of people who watch my videos on Yep, and this we get, we get the signature YouTuber trait of saying, hey, I get this amount of views. If every single one of those person gave me a dollar, I would have this amount of views times the dollars and I would have a lot of dollars. Please do that. Gaming and the amount of people who are watching the new videos on KO Gaming, you're talking at least a thousand in unique individuals a day watch my content. Sometimes it's tens of thousands depending on what I'm playing. If a fraction of those pledged to my Patreon, I would be fine. I would not have to rely whatever whatsoever on the YouTube ad revenue, and I'd be in a good position. The problem is less than 200 people pledge to my Patreon on a monthly basis. And since I made the transition... Oh, and I, we I got a... Have to rely whatever whatsoever on the YouTube ad revenue. We got a I nice made. smug face. The I told you so face. The quote-unquote I made a point face. Position. The problem is less than Look at this face. people pledged to my Patreon on a monthly basis. This is the face. And nowadays we get it. Whenever we get this face, it's much greasier. I wish I could find it. I'm going to try and find it.
because I found somebody on on Twitter that made a really nice edit of it. Oh, I don't know if I'm gonna find it, but it's a it's a really fucking nice face. It makes you want to curb stomp him into the abyss. Oh, it's it was this one. Hold on, this is a poems tweet. Uh, yeah, let me get this up on the screen. There it is. Look at him. This is the the face he does. Of course, this one is edited to make him uh fulfill con some kind of a purpose and not just be a a worthless fucking parasite. But as you can see, the face is the same, but greasier and more smug. This is the same face. Ah, this is it. You know, I just made a point, you guys. You see? And since I made the transition more to be a Twitch streamer than anything else, even less people are pledging to my Patreon. It's good, though, because they are contributing to the streams. But you see what I mean? Like, I need that support on Patreon every month. Right now, if I could double, triple my support on Patreon, things would be in a much better position. I wouldn't be so worried. Wow. But if I got double or triple the revenue I currently get, things would be much better for me. Said everyone ever. The bottom line is, within the next one to two months, I need to find a solution for having zero ad revenue. Do I think he commits tax fraud? I mean, that's that's pl pretty clear cut at this point. Um, since he's writing off his champion's expenses on his business because they're supposed to be microtransactions within a video game, he's definitely committing tax fraud because WWE Champions has absolutely nothing to do with his business. That's pretty much the only game he plays in his personal time. So yes, that would I would consider that tax fraud. YouTube, if you guys pledge to my Patreon, that would fix that, okay? I need you if you are an ongoing and avid watcher of my videos. So let's see what's happening on the DSP Patreon. Patreon. Okay, it's that simple. It's, it's do or die time. It's do or die. Me for 10 well, years. I guess we died then. Uh, so the Patreon got 36 paid members at $375.4 a month. And some of those people, I think, you know, Slayer, um, they pledge around 50 so they can get the, um, what was it, the private react. Here it is. Yes, private react or Q&A video. So there's at least one of those people, which is Slayer, doing this. Uh, but I would, I would say it's maybe, maybe two of them, maybe. I don't know. So $100, an estimate, that's my estimate, that is just from two people. And the rest of them are just probably giving them something just so, just so we can keep the Patreon viable and not just shut it down. There you go. Another nice shot of this face. Fantastic. And you probably have this mentality that Phil will overcome everything. And Phil, I don't have to ever worry about. I think Phil has this mentality because in the last couple of years, I've heard more than, uh, I guess, two or three segments of him talking about how he's going to overcome everything. But now I guess this is your mentality. Contributing to Phil because no matter what, he always seems to overcome every hurdle. Now I'm in a situation... If there's no clear end in sight. There's no way out. You have to contribute if you want to keep seeing me be able to put out videos on YouTube, period. Okay? Because I'll be honest with you guys. He's going to be honest. Just just let him take a sip. Because this dude, he talks until he's completely out of breath. And it is kind of remarkable. It is kind of impressive that he can One keep... One of the things I hate the most about him is that he points out things that will fix things. And every single one involves others yep. giving him money or doing things for him. Yeah. Not one ever involves him improving <laughs> something for himself. That's literally it, dude. All of the things that are going to fix something require somebody giving him money in some way. Uh, so, uh, like I was saying, it's pretty impressive that in his bad, he bad health, because he is in pretty bad health, we can't lie, he still manages to keep talking on and on and on before completely running out of steam a few options all right and one of the options I and also i don't know why people have said that he's lost a bunch of weight when here in 2018 he were he looks kind of the same way he looks nowadays uh, also shout out no i guess we have a negative shout out what's a negative shout out it's a dishonorable mention uh to viper who was busted having locked a woman in his garage for five fucking years and she basically was just locked up the whole time so, yeah, I hope he goes to jail for a long, 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 long time. And I'm not going to miss him. <sighs> Looking at is just becoming a... What was I going to do? Oh, yeah, we're going to look up DSP Gaming to compare. We get a health check. What is the health check? Let's see. Uh, I don't know, dude. What we got here? Oh, it's a Gundam versus DSP Gaming from the Side Scrollers DSP interview from 13 days ago. So this was a fan-voted moment of 2023.
That's that's interesting. I would say a better moment was when Keemstar joined the call because that was just out of nowhere, dude. DSP agreed to it. It was completely consensual, even though I I think he might have regretted it. Okay. Changes, new channels, excitement going on around here. So this is how he looks nowadays. That's how he looked back in the day. And he kind of looks the same. Maybe I guess his face, his face might look, oh, this is a terrible pause, but I'm going to leave it on. His face might look thinner, but I think that's because it's just more loose. Because now it's just more melted and more floppy and everything because it's been a long time, dude. It's been, uh, how many, like six years? Not, not six years yet, but five in a bit. So, of course, he's going to change. Completely. But, I mean, he is changing to this. So, maybe, can we, can we go back? Can we have a facial reconstruction surgery to get him back to this? I'm not asking for much. Because can we do, a, like, a facial liposuction and suck off the snort sacks? All on today's Level 1 podcast. A big segment once again about DSP. Mia Throwback. Cat looking like a newly pulled six star hug <laughs> and also Phil is going to replace Dean Ambrose as the new lunatic friend. <laughs> yeah. <of> everyone. <laughs> yeah, he definitely should do that. He should replace uh, R-Truth as the delusional guy who's always out of touch and has no idea what's going on at any time. That's who sh he should be. Except R-Truth is genuinely an entertaining guy. And DSP is um, a guy. Back because now the channel's been live for three days and we have what are we watching right now hold on this is the daily wrap i'm not getting scammed into watching this fuck that because this is just a rehash of him playing resident evil zero the sea of stars in throwback progress nah fuck that this shit is trash if i'm making ten dollars a day the work that it takes to upload the videos to youtube and babysit them babysit sure them in playlists <laughs> and out when the stuff is live and all don't the the parents of the videos pay you for the baby babysitting services why not come on he's babysitting videos this is the most pathetic fucking specimen dude dollars a day what is what does it mean babysitting videos you just check up on your laptop once every like 30 minutes to see if a video is is uploaded is that babysitting videos? That's not work. When instead, I could be focusing exclusively on my Twitch streams. I don't have to worry about copywritten music and just put out the Twitch streams daily with whatever music is on them, right? Because I don't have to worry about copyright or content ID on YouTube. I could do special stream-only events. It says I'm not recording locally ever anymore. If I only do streams on Twitch, I can now play PC games on, Whoa, my PC yeah. on Twitch. See what he I actually ended up playing them a couple of times. It was always miserable because this dude should have a restraining order from all PCs all around the globe. You should not be allowed to step nowhere near a PC. I mean, there's a lot of benefits if I were to become a 100% full-time Twitch streamer. Now, I'm not saying wow, that's what, what happened I with that. Do, but if I may have to do it, I may have to do it. If you want to see me keep uploading to YouTube right now, since it looks like there's really slim to no chance that DSP Gaming is going to get its advertisements back, I need you to pledge to my Patreon. Now, there pledge are other ways you can today. Contribute to. You can go to my Teespring shop. And but, buy you know, this gets me thinking, why is the Patreon not being plugged as much as it used to? Because some YouTubers see Patreon as just, you know, the monthly paycheck you do, so you don't have to worry about the YouTube monetization stuff, which I think is a pretty good practice to have. You know, if you can convince people to support you on Patreon, you can give them the perks that are going to appeal to them. Uh, why not just do that and forget about the YouTube monetization bullshit and trying to get around copyright claims and nonsense? But he just seems to have completely forgotten about it. I don't know. Buy you know a T-shirt or something that helps out. But I guess I guess it has to do with uh, giving perks to people, and he doesn't like doing that because he already feels like he does more than enough. So why why even bother? Or even if you don't attend the streams, I do have a tips page. Where you can lend me a tip. You can actually say, oh, Phil, I watch your videos. Wait, you can lend me a tip? When are you paying it back? And buy you know, a t-shirt or something. That helps you can out. lend me a or, tip. even if you don't attend the streams, I do have a tips page where you can lend me a tip. You can, you can lend him a tip. Uh, even though he's, uh, he's not exactly known for paying back the money that he owes. You know, seeing how he's bankrupt because he didn't pay back the money that he owns. Uh, yeah. So there you go. You should de definitely lend him a tip.
You have to say, oh, Phil, I watch your videos, and I don't want to pledge to your Patreon, but here's a tip. Hope this helps here's you out. Here's a tip. You can do that, too, okay? And that, all that information is on my, my Twitch page. You know, if you want to go check that out, twitch.tv forward slash darksidephil has all the details on how to tip me and everything. But this is it. I'm not kidding. I'm not joking. This is not me over-exaggerating. I made no money on YouTube. All right. I made, like... <laughs> This is an absolutely classic DSP gaming moment. Absolutely classic. Here, th <laughs> get a load of this fucking monologue, dude. Side Phil has all the details on how to. Dude, I'm not over exaggerating. I make no money. Well, I make some money. <laughs> Immediately over exaggerates and everything. But this is it. This is it. This is it. I'm not kidding. I'm not joking. This is not me over exaggerating. This is not me over exaggerating. So this is at 751. Pay attention to the timestamp here. 751. I made no money on YouTube. All right. And he over exaggerated at 754 and actually caught himself over exaggerating <laughs> and corrected himself. <laughs> I made like $80 on YouTube. I made like $80, week. which is like no money. That, that might as well be $0, to be honest, for the, the dark side fill uh, wallet. For DSP Industries, or what was it called? DSP Enterprises. That is not... And also Burnell Productions. Apparently, he has two names of his business. Go figure. He's a very honest guy. Enough to support me, and, and within two months here, if I can't get a solution, I'm not going to be able to afford my bills anymore, and there's going to be drastic measures that have to be taken, and if it's, forget YouTube, I just become a full-time streamer, I guess that's what it's going to have to be. Well, that happened. to be that... But it's always that happened even though nowadays he's also a YouTuber as well because it didn't make enough money. Well, you might have heard the, the latest the Squeeze Banana song, which is fucking Squeeze Banana 4, I guess. Um, this one I made today from clips of him from yesterday, I think. Was it net. Okay, uh, let's look up Banana. And you, you guys are not going to believe what happens. Okay, this is the outdated Pit Pit Go. Because we got several now. This is how fucking awesome this is. We got several search engines. Hold on. So this is uh, the banana song from yesterday's clips and clips from before. Banana. Uh, this was idea of Rene. Today when I posted the actual broadcast, he said that DSP sang the banana song again and I should make Squeeze Banana 4. And I had like... I set a challenge for myself to make a song in one and a half hours, and I actually did this. And this song was made in one and a half hours. So this is the banana song from yesterday, you guys. I think is this one. The bananas. We don't have any bananas. I have my gift of gab. No, it's not. This is the, the gift of gout. Sing the banana song. There we go. Here it is. When he talks about... Ah! Oh, the banana, tasty banana, put it in your mouth and squeeze. <laughs> that was it. That's from literally yesterday, not even like 24 hours ago. That's a fresh banana mansion. And we got also another one. Uh, and that comes out when you look up tasty banana. And when you look up tasty banana, you're probably going to find a lot of them. Yeah, there's one of him playing uh, Lies of P. Tasty banana, put it in your mouth, squeeze on the P. Excuse me. There you okay. go. Uh, and the, the really fun thing about the banana song is that he's super confused about it. Because he doesn't understand. He hasn't actually heard, I guess, the, the ones that I've made. And he thinks that it's a detractor meme every time that he sings the song. Which I, I guess kind of is. I, I guess. Uh, I, I don't know. Here's another one. T bananas. They put them in their mouths. They squeeze. Anyway. Oh, shit. Hold on, not this one. I think it's this one. Is I it? want banana, tasty banana, put it in my mouth and squeeze. Right, I, don't, I actually don't know what the song sounds yeah, like. Yeah, he actually doesn't even know how the song, songs, the song sounds like, even though he made it, but he doesn't remember making it or something. It's very complicated. But uh, so is he because he's a very complex human. He's a complex style human. Always been I could still work as a YouTuber and a streamer because I'm making the revenue from YouTube to make sense to work on that. Now I'm not anymore. This is literally like fan service for me putting the videos on YouTube at this point. So I need your support, guys. Please, Patreon.com forward. And again, again, it's a transactional style relationship. You guys, it's a fan service that I'm even bothering to put up the videos. So please, you do your part.
I mean, give me money so I can keep doing the fan service. I thought fan service was selfless. You do it to please the fans and not to, uh, I don't know, just like dangle it in front of their face so you can expect something out of them. Dark side Phil pledge. By the way, if you pledge right now in the next three days by the end of July. What's going to happen? Let me guess. He's going to get it immediately. You're going to get in today. We hit the subscriber goal on my Twitch channel for the month. Which oh, wow. Look at these eyes. Well, I was wrong. But anyways, which means you will be able to nominate and vote. And you're going to be nominating and voting and stuff. It's your favorite stupid. moments in my 10 year history here as a YouTuber for a special event that I'm going to be doing in September where I am going to <laughs> react to my old content. Wait, I, I need this face when he said react, dude. This this video is a treasure trove of faces. We got every face in the book. We got this face. Streams daily with whatever music is on, though, right? Because I don't have to worry about copyright. We got every face. Every frame is a face. By the way, so if you play a vlog like my old series, it's cool. A 10-year retro a vlog like my $5 or more to my Patreon. By year history here as a YouTuber. And I lost the, the face I was looking for. In September, where I am going to read. Oh, this, this one. Oh, look at him. He's so demented. It's like he's devouring the world. To my he's devouring your tips. He's just consuming it. You're injecting money into his bloodstream. Old content. So if you pledge $5 or more to my Patreon by the end of July, you have three days to do it. All right. <laughs> the, the fingers, dude. All the, the, everything about this video is just peak lol cow content. I fucking love it. I love it. It's great. Let's see some of the, the other emergency videos. Let's just look up emergency. Right, so we're gonna get the trilogy. This is the trilogy. This is the actual peak of DSP gaming, of uh, KO Gaming 1, excuse me. So we get part one, the explanation, where we get my favorite thumbnail of all time. Nothing in between. This is the best thumbnail he's ever put out. With him, it, it kind of encapsulates his entire existence on the internet. It's just hands on his head, crazy look, looking towards the corner, because the corner demon is watching and waiting to consume his... Uh, his daily pledge of tips. In part two, of course, we got brainstorming, and this is his brainstorming face. And uh, since he's a, a very, very smart guy, it only took him 11 minutes to brainstorm. That's why this one, this episode is very short. Because the explanation was an hour and 20 minutes long. The brainstorming, it took him like 10 minutes to figure out what he's going to do. And guess what? What he's going to do is ask for your money. And then part three has the ideas in temporary strategy. I, I want to see what they are. And so I'm putting on, a, on Twitter right now. Oh, we got this nice shaky okay. cam. And let's I, hopefully we'll get more, even more people to talk and we'll get a good discussion going about, you know, options for the future. Oh, yeah. Okay. So he wanted to post something on Twitter and people would have a discussion and help him figure it out. Okay. This is so good. This is a guy who never socializes. Never networks, never communicates with anybody else unless it's for direct personal benefit. But he expects every time something bad happens to him for people to rally around and make a big deal out of it. This is the same thing that happened when, um, what was that thing? He posted on Twitter about it. I think it was, was it a DMCA? Was it something else? Was it, oh yeah, it was the Comcast thing. Yeah, when, a, when the hacker was messing up his internet and he posted this big fucking thing. And said, like, even if you don't like me, you can agree this is fuck up. Let's make a big deal about it. And then no deal was made about it. And then they just fixed his internet like two days later. So basically that's what happened. Oh, by the way, your name is Josh Hustle, not John Hustle. I'll read your cheer in a moment, but I'm sorry, dude. I keep calling you jo John Hustle. My bad. Come on. That's his it's brother. Those days, dude. That's I his brother agree. channel. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I feel bad now. Oh, I got an anonymous dollar tip. Someone who just says, I vote to re-upload classic playthroughs on Twitch. Hey, yo! This guy got his wish. Five years after the fact. Look at this. Look at this. They did it, dude. It's happening now. I hope this guy is back and watching all the playthroughs and, and putting him in the background while he sleeps so DSP can get the watch time so he can get monetized again. Um, Dude, it's happening. Like You can. You actually can if you're not aware. You can actually upload videos to Twitch that are on demand. You can do all the signs point to him being a cokehead snot. Look, I, I would like to believe that, but from all the spending he's uh, doing on everything else, I don't think he has time uh, or money for coke. Because, you know, coke fucking costs money, dude. You can either do you can do a stream premiere 
of classic stuff, or you could just have it go on demand as a video you can watch on Twitch. But the bottom line is, uh, I don't want to turn off DSP Gaming, even if I can never monetize DSP Gaming ever again. I want it to be standing there as an existing example of what I've done for eight years. Eight years of work, right? 50,000 videos. Yep. And it was... Wait, what? DSP Gaming? Yeah, that, that channel is popping right now. I want it to much be like D uh, Dark Side Phil, where it's still there and people can go and watch the videos and enjoy them at their leisure. Um, it sucks that... I won't make money on it anymore. Yeah, I agree with you, John Bono. Uh, Hulkamaniacs don't do drugs, brother. He's learned that from the Hulkamaniac himself. Persona 5 part 460, Defuke, and he's not still in the end. Legit? Oh yeah, I remember at, at some point, this channel became a landfill channel, like, much like any other fucking channel he's ever made. But yeah. <laughs> it took him 468 parts. To actually beat Persona 5. 468! That's a playthrough for the ages, dude. That's how many hours? Is is each part just, like, two hours long? What? He must have really liked that game if he played it for, like, that much. Shit is fucking crazy. 460... Oh, 469 is the actual epilogue. 469. Oh, my God. It's wild. Years of work that I should have perpetually been able to make money on forever, but I don't want to now disable that channel completely just to upload videos to, to Twitch, you know what I mean? So I don't think I'll be doing that. I don't think I'll be, oh, let's just upload all the old videos to Twitch and abandon YouTube. Oh, let's watch um, while he's back, at, or actually finally showed up to his own stream, which might take a couple more minutes. Let's watch that latest video of him crying about the, the throwback channel, not already having issues so this video is brought to you by the snort -a maniac dude snort hogan this one fantastic thumbnail the hulk -a maniac is uh, giving his best r kelly impression and dsp is just taking it dude he's taking it like a true hulk -a maniac you know like <laughs> so yeah this is the video it's 25 minutes long but i'm gonna skip to this point here because in the beginning he gets super distracted about like his camera and stuff, and this is bullshit. Also, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. Your video will go live within moments that it uploaded. And then other times, it would just sit there and get stuck in processing for hours on end for seemingly no reason. I think it has something to do with YouTube servers. But basically, you couldn't control that. That was on YouTube's end. So it used to be you could somewhat control the order that videos uploaded and went live on YouTube, it just wasn't foolproof, okay? Today, YouTube changed this. It was about maybe four or five years ago, YouTube changed this whole process. Now, let's say I want to upload 10 videos, okay? So, I start uploading one. I put all the data in. I start uploading the next, and immediately it starts uploading that one too. Wait, what? So, the way it works is, it used to be it would upload one whole video in its entirety, then move on to the next. Upload that whole video in its entirety, then move on to the next. Now, YouTube tries to simultaneously upload all the videos at once. So if you try to queue up 10 videos to upload, yes. it'll literally begin uploading all 10 videos at the same time. Yeah, and I don't know why he's acting like this is such a big deal, because nobody in today's day and age uploads 10 videos a day on YouTube let alone 10 massive videos a day. Because those videos that he tried to upload were multiple gigabytes large, and they were like, I don't know, a completely uncompressed, just source raw material stuff. So I don't know why this is such a big problem with him. So number one, it kills your bandwidth. Number one, this is not true. Because it just basically divides your bandwidth and separates it into each one of the videos so you still upload with the same speed but that speed is divided amongst all the videos that you're uploading right now if you have you know good upload speed which i do it's it can handle so it. this is just like generic placeholder complaints that shouldn't really exist because it's not really an issue for anybody but phil because he still expects youtube to work like it did back in 2010 even though he hated it back then too so I guess you, you can never please the guy. That's why Panda Lee left. But imagine if you don't have good upload speed. It just destroys your internet. And it makes everything insanely slow. 
It used to be, okay, one video... No, that's just not true. It's going to use up all your upload bandwidth. You're not going to be uploading with the download speed, are you? So no, you can still browse your internet, do whatever the fuck you were doing. You, you can watch Netflix or whatever. It makes no difference. It would upload, it would take, what, 20 minutes? Then it would go to the next part. It would upload in 20 minutes, then it would go to the next part. Now, because you're uploading all at once, it decides, oh, it'll all upload at once. Now everything's slow. And that's why sometimes what's happened is after my first stream here. That's his problem now when we get into the hard drive talk. Because he uploads them directly from a hard drive. Which is already like pretty slow speed because it's a hard drive from like 2011. That has a slow reading write speed. You know, all that stuff is just outdated and just clunky. I'll queue up this podcast and a few parts of the gameplay. And I'll just let it sit there and upload. And I'll go downstairs, have dinner, come back, and it's not even done uploading. Okay, so what, what is the problem then? It's not like you need to put in any active effort. You just need to wait for it to upload. If you're not happy with it, get better fucking upload speed. And I'll be like, how is that YouTube's problem? I fail to understand. Well, gives. Why didn't it finish? Because YouTube just decided to be slow that day. And because it was uploading all the videos simultaneously, it just lagged up and didn't finish. And that happens not all the time. But So I figure uh, whenever you're trying to upload multiple videos, YouTube has to read them from your hard drive, correct? I, I would assume it's like that. And if you're using a shitty-ass hard disk from like 10 years ago, 15 years ago, it's clearly it's going to be much slower than usually. Maybe you can just copy the videos onto your real hard drive that is on your fucking laptop or whatever, and then it's going to be a little bit better. Maybe once a week at least. And it's all on YouTube. Why they changed their process for uploading videos, I don't know. So how did this affect me? Why did they change it? Because nowadays everything is done asynchronously, which kind of means you can do multiple things at the same time, such as, you know, have a video be uploading and still be able to tweak around your YouTube studio and stuff. They did it so it's more flexible, so you can multitask. That's why they did it, because that's the current day technology, asynchronous exchange of information it's the future dude come on well you got to remember something <clears throat> okay all of my legacy content is on incredibly old external hard drives and that's your problem that is a ancient i think it's maybe a seagate hard okay. drive so how should youtube give a fuck about this or do anything about this from 2009 that is old technology usb 2.0 old style hard drive not even the mini hard drive it's huge so it's already slow, and now you're trying to tell that hard drive to upload 10 files at once to the internet? Do you think you can handle that? Of no. course it can't. You can copy it on your laptop that probably has an SSD, and it's going to be much better. I'm confused. How is Lil Shake and Bake getting these videos to upscale? Is he putting them into a Dropbox for them? This well, is all done in such a bad way, it's in bear bunnies. Right, that's what I'm thinking, because later in this video, I'm probably not going to get to it because the guy is going to go live anytime now. Uh, later in this video, he says that... Hold on, let me open my, my notes that I had for today. We talked about this on the podcast, but I can talk about it today. It's the uh, same thing. So basically, he admitted that it takes four hours of insert name here to pull off one single part of the playthrough. Uh, which means, I'm, I'm thinking it's just their, their workflow is really bad and clunky because, I mean, it's a DSP fan. So I don't think everything is running optimal right there because it shouldn't be taking you four hours to upscale something and render it and all that other stuff. And uh, combining three videos into one 30-minute video and... Uh, for this playthrough later on in this video, he says it's going to take 12 to 24 hours, and I've written in all caps, of someone else's work for the whole playthrough. So yeah, this is uh, some great unpaid work. that you. That's the thing, you can't even put that into your resume. What are you going to say? That you help this dude put out YouTube videos? That's like me putting Snortwave records on my resume. It, it kind of raises more questions than it actually answers. So basically what happens is, I'll set it up to upload But how the, the, the actual process, up. how they're doing the upscaling, I really don't know. 
maybe it's in uh, DaVinci Resolve. Maybe it's some some plugin for Premiere Pro. I don't really know. So I ended up having to restart. I tried uploading. It just like lagged up and wasn't working. So I had to restart. And basically, I had to do it, maybe do three, four videos at a time tops. That was it. I couldn't have it, like, upload. Because like I told you guys, those videos are 10 minutes long. Yes, not only are they 10 minutes long, they are raw, uncompressed videos, probably in .avi format, from 2009. On a hard drive from 2009. So you can see all of these issues are compiling on top of each other. And they're all his problems. YouTube has nothing to do with this. The YouTube uploads works perfectly fine. I wanted to upload like two hours of footage. That's 12 videos. Well, I can't do them all at once and walk away. I got to queue up three videos to upload, walk away, come back in an hour, queue up three more videos to upload, walk away, come back in an I would think the first thing I would do in a situation like this is you get some kind of a converter and you convert the source files into some kind of a modern uh, encoding, like MKV, because MKV is pretty good. I record on it on OBS, and I think it's, it's like the recommended one. So the first thing you should do is kind of get it back to modern day technology. And then you start upscaling and doing all that other stuff, because then you have to work with smaller files, and it just makes everything easier. Because if you drop a 5 gigabyte file into Premiere Pro, it just makes a frowny face, and it crashes the desktop. An hour, queue up three more videos to upload. Do you see what a pain in the ass this is? And this is just my initial attempt to get these videos online. It's already a pain in the ass, which I knew. I knew from the and moment when I was going to start working. And you see, he does the bare minimum of work. He just sends somebody the videos, um, like Vike said in his uh, tip from a couple minutes ago, maybe through Dropbox, maybe through like Google Drive or whatever. So. Yeah, he does this, and it's still too fucking annoying. And the, the guy that has to spend four hours on a single part, yeah, we don't think about him. We just give him a shout-out. We don't even say who he is. There was going to be Because people are going to reach out to him and tell him to ask for money, like they did to Arkham, and then DSP is going to be sad. Problems, all right? First thing I go to do, it's annoying, all right? So once I figure out this is how it's going to be, I just can't queue up everything and walk away. I'm going to have to actively be coming back to this shit, which is very annoying. I... Some of the videos I'm busy. I'm in the midst of a there lot we go. of stuff going on so right now. So um, this is this is just started right now. So let's hear how busy he is. I'm juggling. Just to give you guys some perspective here. Today is my weekly react day. Where we do DSP versus the internet over on my react channel, DSP Reacts. So I've got all that going on. Setting that up. Making playlists. Approving videos so that we can get that going for today. The same time, I've got... My private patron videos that I need Oh, yeah. He needs to make the, the OnlyFans videos. He had, like, two to make. I have four. Okay? <laughs> like, oh! Okay, four. Cool. So... Why is he acting like it's a bad thing? He gets $50 per video. That's fucking awesome. I would be doing 20 of them. You get $50 to watch somebody's fucking video that they sent you and say what you think about it. This fucking rocks. The good news is I had already divvied out tonight as a night when I'm not streaming. The one night a, a month that I'm not going to stream because I need to do these private patron videos. I've got private reacts, I've got q and I've got all kinds of stuff going on this month. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, this is good. Busy is good, don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining. But it's complaining. just that I got so much going on right now all at once that it could be a little bit overwhelming because not only do I've got all that going on of course i've got all my regular playthrough stuff going on right all my ongoing streams and stuff should we ask somebody who actually has a fucking nine to five job if they're busy or an actual family with kids and not just a cat that we pretend it's a child uh, i've also got my year-end series starting tomorrow okay yes that's right tomorrow night on the late stream it's going to be the most disappointing games of 2023 countdown which means tonight after i film all those private videos for patrons I then have to set up my year-end series in OBS. I have to actually write my list. What are the most disappointing games of the year? How do I rank them? Why are they disappointing? Then I have to take videos of those games and put them into OBS so I can do that stream tomorrow night. I'm like, oh yeah, I have to do all that tonight. Wow. Really, is that, is that actually so hard?
you don't have to actually put all the videos in OBS. You can put them in a playlist in a media player like VLC and just do a screen capture in OBS. So you don't have to add anything extra to OBS outside of just a screen capture. But I don't expect him to know about this because he doesn't. Oh, by the way. And I'm also he's dark side Phil. A lot on the DSP throwback channel. I'm taking in all of your feedback. I'm watching the videos myself to formulate an opinion about their quality. Um, and we're going to talk a lot about that on the show today because you guys oh, no. superb feedback on that channel on how to improve it and make it better for you. So oh, I'm going to talk about that. about not complaining. What a dent. That's that's always his thing. He just starts complaining and then when he's done, he says I'm not complaining because he thinks it negates it. That stuff today and let you know what I think. Big up, some sign. things have already been implemented thanks to your constructive criticism, okay? So that's great, right? Um, and then I got the special stream going on Wednesday night that you don't even know about because it's a mystery stream. And I haven't revealed a single clue about it at all, but it's going to be the late night stream on Wednesday that I keep telling you guys you've got to be here for if you can make it, okay? So I got all this stuff going on right now, like, whew, and I'm bouncing all over the place and I'm juggling everything. <laughs> and just so you guys know, in addition to all of that, of course, there's the documentary stuff that's going on behind the scenes and stuff like that. So if you're in a situation where normally you would like, you know, reach out to me to talk to me, or maybe you would leave a comment on a video and you would hope for a reply or a response or, you know, and I, you don't get it right away, right? If you email me and I don't respond or whatever, there's a good reason why. It's because right now I am juggling quite a lot, okay? The good news is it's all good stuff. Like, there's not a single bad thing in all that stuff I just described. So, as long as it's all positive, good things for the channels, for the content, for the There we go. For positive here, workload. I'm happy, right? Busy is good. And usually in January, it's the opposite. <laughs> usually in January, it's very slow. And there's not much going on whatsoever. Um, so basically, this is the complete polar opposite of how a, a new year usually starts for me. Um, it'd be great if this is a pattern. Hey, I'd love to hit the ground running every year with exciting projects and new things launching and going on. Um, I guess we'll see. But I'm very excited for the coming year because of all this stuff that's happening. All right? So thank you all. Please, I would ask for a little bit of your patience. Uh, because in the next, you know, week to few weeks, as I'm juggling all of this stuff at the same time, um, there may be mistakes made, there may be things forgotten, I may be late, there may be things <laughs> going on, and if all that happens, look at this uh, busy I man. You guys will be understanding, and let me know. And also, the outfit today is terrible, man. I don't even know how to compare this. This is a hoodie, but also a flannel at the same time. I expect to see Anthony Fantano wearing something like this, and not Dark Side Phil. About things that are maybe messed up if i make a typo in a video if i'm forgetting to do something that i said i was going to do you know i need you guys your help on that um not only am i juggling a million things at once i'm getting older right as i'm getting older you get a little more absent-minded oh, oh my god again with the fucking stupid older meme what the fuck do you mean older people work until they're 65 dude calm the fuck down you got plenty of gas left in the tank things at once okay so it's getting older understanding He's, yeah. he's acting like he's getting dementia or something. He's a 41-year-old dude. And let's start at the beginning today. Whose whole job is just playing video games. And now getting older is a problem. Again, with so much going on, let's just quickly recap. <laughs> Yesterday oh, and no. the streams that I did. Okay, so this is getting a skip because we're doing a recap session. Um, I think then we'll go through the schedule for the week. Then we'll talk about DSP throwback because I've got a lot more to talk about all your feedback has been tremendous on the channel and last night i personally viewed some of the final fantasy videos on that channel to see what they looked like whoa and look at how he's he's talking about this like he gave the person who edited them the privilege to watch his own videos to see if they're not dog shit wow that's crazy dude i respect them so much now okay i wanted to personally see for myself and uh Shouldn't you be able to see for yourself before you upload something to your channel? Or, nah, he's not used to doing that. He just records and uploads. We just, that's how we do it. There's no quality control on DSP Gaming. Now, I got an opinion I'm going to share with you, all right? Anyway, just so you guys know, this is my only stream on this channel of the entire day. This podcast is it. There is no gameplay tonight because I'm filming those private patron videos and then working on my year-end series. 
So FYI, if you like the content, if you want to support it, this is your one opportunity to do it today. Maybe think about becoming a member or getting some memberships. Maybe think about a tip so I can hit my tier one tips goal. Um, that's all I'm really going to say. I'm not even going to bring it up again because I got so much to talk about today that I'd much rather just talk about than focus on, you know, being. And of course, immediately, without hesitation, we transition into begging. It's my only stream, you guys. And of course, the reacts are not prominent with uh, getting high support. So, hint, hint. And also, he fell under 700 members. He's at six, 674 right now. Freaking fun. It's not good, dude. Like that. So, please consider contributing. There will be shout outs at the end of the podcast, as usual. Okay. So, yesterday was Saturday. And Skippable. Some we skipped a live. But I was like, dude, if I didn't have the grenade launcher on me to use that ammo that was game over like there's no way to even survive that like you need to like know everything and it all has to like align <clears throat> perfectly in that game for, for you to survive like wow it's tough um now don't get me wrong i'm not complaining that i'm not having fun i am you guys know i love classic survival horror and this game the only real things that are different in this game from the classics are the visuals are improved right they upscaled them and the controls the movement are more modernized okay the actual gunplay and everything is still outdated the whole inventory man so yeah, yeah he's out. talking about resident evil zero if you're wondering because he's playing it right now dated and tedious but the movement you just aim where you want to go with your thumbstick and it walks it's not the classic tank and, and meanwhile since we're watching this live i'm just gonna um, plug in my capture card and i'll share some of the xbox series s gameplay of grand theft auto 4 on the xbox 360 dude my favorite game ever Literally, I love it. Control that it used to be. Remember, it used to be you're like you're like on a, a weird pole up your ass, so you're spinning like a tank. And if you want to walk forward, you have to like hold the button and push forward to walk forward. So they they removed that. It's at least more modernized movement, but everything else is frustrating. Um, three more hours in, we basically cleared out most of the mansion in the game, and then you end up going to this underground area. There, it's hilarious. They call it the basement. It's like the basement. It's like a dungeon down there. There's torture devices. There's mutant monkeys. There's insane spiders spitting acid at you. How can you say that's the basement? I hate to see the attic. <laughs> you go up there. Like, what the hell's up in the attic? Space aliens, right? So we're going in through there, and we're at a point now in the game where I think we're going to reach our first holy shit, I need to get lucky moment. Because now I'm starting to remember this game from eight years ago. And I distinctly remember there were points in the playthrough where I either had no healing or no ammo. And I was surrounded by enemies. Okay? And that's a problem. This game swarms you with enemies at times with no real viable ways to get away. By the way, there's no dodge mechanic. It's not like you can, like, duke and juke and dodge through the enemies. You know, this isn't Resident Evil 2 Remake or anything. You've just got to get lucky. So, I'm in a situation where I got both of my teammates in a save room with zero healing whatsoever none and right outside the save room there is an army of mutant killer monkeys okay i have very limited ammo not enough likely to kill the monkeys we got to get through this room okay. and back to the mansion okay there are healing here's the, here's the thing with segments like these here's the thing he could just easily say that he had a really fun moment in the game and he should just tell you go check out the the moment in the game that i had and then that's it. Instead of just explaining to you exactly what the fuck happened when he played the game yesterday. In the room. But I need to have be lucky enough to kind of run in there and grab items and use them, combine them to get enough healing and get out of that room. So when I resume this playthrough, which will be on Tuesday, it's going to be a, a pretty epic part. Probably the first whole half hours of me trying and failing at this part until I finally get my characters out of this room. It's funny because I'm reading video comments and people are like, Resident Evil Zero is actually one of the few Resident Evils where you can't actually soft lock yourself because the game just was not designed very well and has portions where if you did not conserve ammo because you didn't know what's coming up, there's no way to beat it. Like apparently there's a boss coming up that if you just don't have beat it. And what I mean by that is I frequently look shit up. All the time this happened. And you guys just didn't know it. Whenever I wasn't oh, wait, wait, camera, wait. any playthrough where I wasn't wait, on Wait, 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 wait. Now we're admitting to looking at guides all the time, which is absolutely not a surprise. But let's get the whole context. That if you just don't have ammo to fight it, it's impossible. You can't kill it with a knife. And there's no way to win. You just lose. The game's over. Uh, well, that's not good. I hope I don't get soft locked. You know, I didn't in my first run. But back then, for, for transparency purposes, I've told you guys for this For transparency purposes. Back in the day before I was a full-time <laughs> live streamer and I was always on camera, 
I frequently cheated. And what I mean by that is I frequently look shit up. All the time this happened. And you guys just didn't know it. Everybody Whenever knew. Whenever I wasn't on camera, any playthrough where I wasn't on camera, there was potential that I looked stuff up but then, to know what was like, happening. Like, why fucking bother? Why bother? Like, actually. Because failing is a part of making YouTube playthroughs, right? Because when you fail, if you can embrace failure, it just turns into a fun moment. But for him, it's like he needs to go look it up because he's too fucking stupid and it's going to make the playthrough bad or something. Like, why I care so much about so it? I could continue on with the playthrough. Now, of course, you guys wouldn't know that, nor would I tell you, but there were definitely situations where I was in tougher playthroughs, RPGs, where you don't know what to do, games that are very difficult like this, where I would look stuff up, okay? Today... I don't do that. I'm live on stream. How could I look stuff up, right? I'm completely different kind of content that I make. Well, today, somebody else looks it up and just tells them in chat. I mean, that's the whole Baldur's Gate 3 playthrough. That's basically what it is. Today. He doesn't need to look it up because it's even lazier now. Um, so in that regard, you know, you know, it's all about us interacting. And you basically, if I got stuck in Resident Evil Zero, I'm sure you guys... Will give me tips on gee how do you do well this th yeah there we go but, yeah it's funny because now people in chat are like wait what i told you guys this a million times and i even showed you that back in the day i owned strategy guides like i've shown you the strategy guides when we went through the closet and stuff i used to go to gamestop buy the games and buy the strategy guide along with the game and use that with my playthrough but you guys wouldn't know that but i would so that that way i could get through the games or else i would have gotten stuck in a lot of games over the years i find it hilarious that some people are like oh i didn't know that I, I've talked about this a million times, especially when I did, did these uh, retrospectives and stuff. I, I've told you, yeah, that back in the day, that was very common. It wasn't until I became a full-time streamer in 2017, so what was that, seven years ago now, that I changed my content style to now it's 100% on-the-fly, genuine, but it's reliant on interaction with you. You see? Very different. <clears throat> Baldum says, I just consider that normal gamer behavior. Well, yeah, you got to realize, you know, especially when you're a content creator, right? And you're, you're performing publicly. People are expecting a certain thing from you. They want you to beat the game, right? More people want me to beat Resident Evil Zero than, than just have the playthrough get softlocked. So, yeah, there's situations where that, it just makes sense, right? <laughs> Fan of Love Crashes, I've been here since 2008, and I knew that. Ponage 101 says, yeah, it's all good. Even Normal I knew that streamer. myself sometimes. I looked up a guide again, because uh, you can now I, I yourself don't, in this you know? game. DSP, this rent. Yeah, you can just, yeah, my God. Because, like, I don't know. I don't, I don't even know what to say about this. Because we've all known that he uses guide. He used the guide for Elden Ring, even though it wasn't a guide. It was just people telling him what to do. But, I mean, why bother having all these fucking discussions about this? Just, like, either do it or don't. Just do the thing your way and be fun doing it. And people are not going to cry about it. Now I, I, I literally just play it cold. And you guys he help plays it cold. to get through stuff. Or, or, for example, with the Baldur's Gate 3 playthrough. There's already been multiple secret rooms and areas I would have missed. And you guys hinted, hey, hey, go over here and jump down here and you're going to see something cool. And I would go there and be like, oh, crap. Up, so that. No signal There's for the contribution. Really that I didn't know about. So that's a good thing, right? That I'm not missing content. But anyway, so in Resident Evil Zero Remastered, interesting part I'm at. When we play it again on Tuesday, we'll see... What happens with the playthrough? Uh, last night was Sea of Stars. <laughs> really great stream. This is my third stream of Sea of Stars. We headed out of that first kind of intro area, and we're in a new part of the map. A uh, whole new, like, like levels. We actually got to a mole town, which is very reminiscent of the mole town in Super Mario RPG. So, again, a lot of references to other RPGs from the past. Uh, you go into your first dungeon, and there's interesting because there's new enemies, but there's new gameplay mechanics. For the first time, the game really starting to feel like Golden Sun because you get the ability to push things with this, like, wind gust on your hand. And so now you can do all these... Oh, uh, I'm skipping to live. ...at least. And it's going to be fun. I'm curious what things we'll, we'll tackle today, what videos... Oh, we forgot. Today on the podcast, there's something we forgot. Shout out to DSP Gout Gout, which is a, <laughs> a Twitter account dedicated to analyzing... Which, how much of the podcast is spent on what? And they did a huge update. Oh, I didn't get the thing. Okay, just a second. They did a huge update on the months from September to December, I believe, included. Well, let me just copy this link, put it up here. You should be able to see it now. Um, so this is it. So September to December, this is part one. I'm not sure exactly, but 
we got some some stats. So let's get it through the stats. In total, it took 8,952 minutes to suffer through all this slog. Uh, intros took 4%. The daily rap recap, so it's the stream recap of yesterday, the thing he's doing right now, took 13% of all of the podcast, which is 1,152 fucking minutes. Then we got the schedule that took 15%, which is 1,381 minutes. We got begging and shout outs that surprisingly is the most out of everything else. You can see this is 25%. A quarter of every podcast he's done from September to December seems like it's just begging or shout outs. Then we got DSP News to be 11%, QA to be 22%, Day Off is 3%. For some reason, the Mortal Kombat refund is 1%. And the suggestion box is also 1%. And then he did uh, 62 minutes on the Game Awards. So yeah, this shit that he's putting out to be meaningful, high-quality content is just fucking padding and regurgitating the same fucking information day in and day out. Watch of the year. I think that's incredibly cliche and stupid at this point, which is why I don't do it. I do the most disappointing games of the year. The difference there is that the games that I'm going to count down... <laughs> We're all variously not as good as you would have hoped they would have been for various reasons. In some cases, these games are bad games. All right, I'm just going to make that clear. Games that probably should have been much better and ended up just being really, really not very good. But in other cases, these are good games that just had parts that weren't that good or games that maybe were monstrously overhyped but then didn't live up to the hype. Games that were over-advertised or they over-promised and then they under-delivered. All right, and I got a good amount. I, what I do is all year, I save my various playthroughs of those games that I think are gonna qualify, and now is the time when I go through all of those. Uh, Here's the thing, I might do a restream of that, but I expect to agree with him on most things because he his end of the year list is nothing but regurgitating the popular opinion on games. I wouldn't be surprised if Redfall is on the list because Redfall was a game that came out and was bad. And I wouldn't be surprised if Starfield is on the list. It's probably going to be on the list, and I'm probably going to agree with it. Then, what kind of beer do I like? Um, whatever the fuck cheap stuff they have that comes in a big package of, like, two liters and above. I'm not really pretentious when it comes to beer. Eventually, I would, uh, occasionally, I would have some nice beer with my dad when we we're hanging out. But most of the time, it's just like, whatever the fuck. I don't really care. I'm enjoying myself uh, at the end of the year when I get to actually go through here, and I'm like, huh. Ah. No, I don't think I Starfield is going to be on both lists. I think it's going to be just on the disappointing list. And I'm definitely going to agree with him because Starfield is definitely not into consideration for one of the best games that came out in 2023. It just isn't. It was because now I remember this one. I remember this one. I remember this one. Problem is a lot of the times I play so many games, it's hard for me to even remember what I did at the beginning of the year. So this is going to be good to go through. I'll go through all my playlists, go through the videos I've saved, and compile that list, and then get that ready for you tomorrow night. All right? So it's going to be a fun countdown. And by the way, this by far will be my longest countdown. Why? Because a lot of the times when you are explaining what's really bad about a game, you want to justify it. Oh, do fairly. you do you guys think um, he's going to put uh, Street Fighter VI on both lists? I think he's going to be just on the best games, and it might be top three. Because, I mean, he had a lot of fun when it first came out, and it was, like, the best fighting game of this generation or something. I don't see why it would be on the bad list. Because think about it. The issues he has with that game, he has with every single fighting game that has online capabilities ever. So I don't see why he would put it on the worst list. For example, if there's a game that's not necessarily overall a bad game but it's on the disappointing list, you want to be able to justify what you're saying because you might upset some people if you're saying a game is bad that really isn't bad. You know what I'm saying? So. But what if you can just justify why you think it's disappointing, right? I, I mean, yeah, if your justification is good enough, then why would you upset people? Why would you care if, you're, if you have a good point? That should be exciting tomorrow night. I hope you'll join me for that Monday night right here on DSP Gaming, okay? Then on Tuesday... It's going to be more Resident Evil Zero Remastered, as I've already explained. Um, we might be hopefully getting through a very tough part, I hope. And then uh, Tuesday night, it's going to be a dual late night stream. This is getting skipped to live. Pacific time, and if not, even though we don't well, get to skip all that much, but 
You know, uh, you got to work with what you get. Thursday next week, it's going to be a balance of Baldur's Gate three and Resident Evil Zero on the daytime streams, Street Fighter six and Sea of Stars on the late streams. I really don't Big know how much Street for the I sub, dude. Play at this point because the game has degraded so poorly in the master level online. The matches just really aren't even fun to play anymore because the connections are bad and people abuse it. Um, so I'm debating how much to play. I'm at least playing it once a week for the next couple of weeks. But maybe I would want to do two streams, right? Because someone even suggested, well, since this is your last hurrah, why not go back and play other characters like Zangief you haven't played in 100 years and you were doing decently with him, why not go back to him or something like that? Well, that's a good point. Maybe I should. So I'll think about it, and I'll probably do like one to two streams of Street Fighter VI, but I'm probably going to be doing a lot of Sea of Stars, two to three streams of Sea of Stars at night to get good progress in. Maybe I'll throw in a late night Call of Duty stream, which now we haven't done in a couple of weeks, just for variety purposes for a random multiplayer stream. Um, we might have some time to toss in randomness, and what I mean by that is, if someone was interested in seeing me try out one of these indie games or whatever that people have suggested, like Pizza Tower or something like that, I would. Oh be man, him time, playing Super I don't want to uh, Pizza to Tower is going to be something. The new games are coming on the twenty first, so that's two weeks. In two weeks, we've got two new releases. Well, not the twenty first, excuse me, the twenty sixth. So it's a little over two weeks. Um, and so I don't want to commit to doing a new game. There's not going to be enough time, right? So rather than me saying, oh, let's do a whole new thing and squeeze it in, I'd rather just say, hey, we have time for some randomness. You know, we'll see. So see, people have some, some suggestions. Like this guy says, what about the God of War DLC? I don't know. I don't even know how long it is. I've heard it's just grinding combat with a little bit of story, so I don't even know if I'm interested. And quite frankly, there hasn't been an overwhelming group of people asking me for it. DLCs are very hit or miss. Usually if it's a DLC like a Dark Souls DLC or a fighting game character DLC, it'll do all right. Every other game that has a DLC, most people don't give two shits about. At least around here, you know? Around here? Like on your channel? Or in Seattle? So, we'll see what happens as we move forward the rest of the month until the new release is at the end, okay? Only other thing to mention before we get to the DSP throwback segment, because <clears throat> people have been asking, so what's your next big event? What's your next big thing that's going to happen? Uh, we already talked about it. I think we're going to be doing another Super Bowl event. Last year we did one. And it was very successful. Um, people loved it. I dressed up in my football jerseys. I have three of them, American football jerseys. I have a football helmet now. Oh, my God. Um, he's going to pretend like he's a fan of football just to monetize it, dude. This guy fucking sucks. I have some props. We drank. Some we props. We had a good time. <laughs> now, what we would actually do during this event is really up to you. Do you want to see me do some multiplayer and video games? Do you want to see me react to Super Bowl-related ads from over the years? Do you want to see me chow down on, on food? Do you want to see me drink some booze? You know, it's, booze. All, it's up to really you. So let's think about this over the next month. I think the Super Bowl's on uh, Saturday the 11th. Wow, that was a juicy one. So if we do it... Excuse me. I think the Super Bowl's on Sunday the 11th. So if we do the marathon on Saturday the 10th, right? That should be pretty fun. So let's, let's uh, start talking about it. And then over the next you know one to two weeks we'll brainstorm and then we'll start locking in ideas for it and start planning out for that event okay but that's really the next big marathon because people have been saying when's your next marathon you know you did a bunch one every month pretty much for the last several months well that'll be the next one in early february okay <clears throat> okay um let's see here i think i covered everything all right i want that's to it dude DSP it's over because there's so much going on over there um if you're not interested in DSP throwback, well, I apologize. You might not want to watch this segment. I'm Obviously, it's the guy hot. Sometimes blue moon, but I'll take a cheap Corona. Hey, big ups. Yeah, I mean, Guinness, of course. When I can get it, I'm going to get it, dude. Corona is not really my thing. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not really digging it. Never was my thing. And then the COVID situation happened, dude, and I completely didn't understand. Why would a beer do such a thing? It's terrible. But anyways, big ups, dude, for the 20. And DSP just got a 50 gift bomb from a person I've never seen before. So you know it's real. Thing going on right now. <laughs> content that everyone's talking about. Um, I'm getting tons of feedback on it. So I want to share that with you. Uh, so for those who don't know, I don't know how you wouldn't know if you haven't, if you, unless you haven't tuned into my content all week. I rebranded my own channel, my old channel. Holy moly. Seriously, I just got gifted 50 memberships. 50 memberships just got gifted to the channel. Hey, we're wow. back to over 700, dude. dude. Thank you hype, for hype, hype. 50 memberships to the channel. There's so many. I don't think I can even call, call out these names. So congrats to anyone who just got a gifted membership. Did oh, and another 50. Another 50 memberships to the channel. Oh, yeah. This is the new Team Ico Gamer, dude, Nikita. 
I think we just got gifted a hundred membership. Whoa! If that's the case, because I don't know if that's a duplicate or not. Immense positivity. Tell. You can't tell. What? 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 You can't tell. All right. But if that's the case, this would be the most <laughs> memberships that we've had on this channel in years. What? I think Nikita just gifted. What do you mean in fucking years? What about Team Ico Gamer? Other oh, fifty memberships. So that's a hundred fifty. Is that for real? What? Ugh. This is insane. So you, this right here will be popping up for the rest of the podcast. It's not going to go away because that's going to pop up for every single person. So right now we have 150 gifted memberships. Another 50 memberships? Are you crazy? Oh, but this what? what uh, hold on. How many people are actually in his chat right now? Because they can't pick up the memberships. Yeah, almost everybody's a member in his chat. Except me, I guess, because I'm not subscribed or something something. So this is very fishy. I mean, they can't just accept the membership. So what is going to happen? You needed to come with bots, dude. You don't know the drill? First, it's insane. Thank you, whoever Nikita is. Wow. I think another 50 gifted memberships. Uh, holy shit. Well, that's insane. So if 200, if that's the case and they all go through, which, I, which they might or might not because with YouTube, sometimes it's finicky. When you gift that many, it, I, hopefully it, everyone gets them. Um, that would be the most memberships we've had in multiple years. I think the most memberships we ever had on this channel was around a thousand or a few over a thousand. This would get us up to like 875. All right. So this would be close to the record. Why is he, why is he acting like he doesn't remember team Ico gamer that happened like what a year and maybe a year and a half at most ago. And it's a dude that legitimately bought bots. So they could accept the memberships. Like an actual dedicated cuck. All right. I'm just going to let it roll. I'm going to continue on with my podcast. Because if I just, if I shouted these out, we wouldn't have a show. Thank you so much, Nikita. I mean, 200 freaking gifted memberships is insane. She gifted 250. Uh, no, it says 200 on my screen. But maybe my screen is wrong. Maybe it's out. Maybe there's so many came in so quickly. Well, he doesn't have 250 people in his chat, so clearly nobody's going to take him. That, uh, you know, that it's not counting. Right now, we're up to 80 and climbing because what's happening is YouTube is manually uh, assigning them. So I'll let you know. Let's let it roll for a bit, and I'll let you know where, where it settles. And by the way, Nikita, thank you so very much. Obviously, everyone in the community, if you get a gifted membership this morning, please thank Nikita. And FYI, if they don't go through, you get a refund. Because this happened before where people have done member bombs on the channel. And if the whole, uh, like, like 200 or so don't go through, you'll get a refund eventually for the ones that didn't go through. Oh, that's actually a good point. Sometimes you can get a membership when you're not even on the channel or watching the stuff. That's how I got a membership to the side scrollers. I don't even know how that happened. I don't watch their stuff. But for one month, I had a gifted membership. Because that does happen sometimes when you do these mass giftings. Sometimes there's a glitch and it doesn't go through. That's happened a few times over the years. So, <clears throat> okay. So anyway, wow. Thank you so much, Nikita. I got gifted a TBS and I membership and I wasn't there. Yep, that's what I'm talking about, dude. That might happen sometimes, I guess. I don't know. But big ups for a super chat. We'll update that in a bit once we, we settle in and we actually see how many members we have. Okay. Awesome. Well, I think people are going to enjoy these memberships for the month. No, that's pretty nuts. Okay, now let's talk about DSP throwback. So for those who don't know, all right, the DSP throwback channel is a relaunch of my old channel, KO Gaming. That channel oh, and this getting skipped. We're Art. skipping to the present, I, dude. I say all these words I would never say today, all right? And just for the record, the reason that that kind of commentary was, was used back then is very simple. I came from the Street Fighter community. And in the FGC or what? Street Fighter community back then, language was ridiculous. You know, what? It, bro, he's blaming the FGC for being profane. Just at least fucking own up to that. It happened like 15 years ago. Just fucking own up to it. It's past the date of uh, validity, dude. You can just admit that you did it. What a fucking dumbass. It really felt like a you gotta blame it on the FGC because you were a part of it. Even though he was too toxic for the FGC, too. That's why they didn't want him on. Fraternity. So that seems like a... Like a good old boys club. Oh, it was a fraternity. Like a passage was to basically be verbally abused. Like, it was just part of that, okay? Um, 
words were thrown around and no the thing was no one took offense when these words were used today you use those words just in public people are like what's wrong with you like do you have problems like why are you saying these awful things but back then it was just common language that was used okay uh one word i will i will i will just say this right up front something that i feel awful about okay back then the word rape was literally used not to mean what it actually means no it basically no it actually meant what it it meant but early youtube was built different so rape jokes were a really common thing that's ksi you know the guy who now owns like 50 percent of prime the energy drink he used to make FIFA montages where the biggest meme would be the rape face, which is like him doing a face like, you know, he's, he's going to do something, obviously. But I don't, I don't see why DSP needs to justify this. It meant like being destroyed in a fighting game, okay? So you would say... Oh, wait, uh, wait, what? We, we got a new definition of rape, you guys. It's not when you get actually, you know, rape, like sexually assaulted. It's when you lose at a fighting game. So got... Get the fuck out of here. fighting game if they got, like, double perfect it. And you would use that all the time. That was a common word to be used in the fighting game community. All right? So now I go back and I watch my old videos and I'm like, why did I just casually drop that word in the middle of the video? It's like out of... You can always casually drop the word rape if it's in context. It, it, it's just the problem is that his contexts are usually pretty bad. Place. You watch it in 2023, 2024, actually. You're like, that's so out of place. Why? It doesn't even make sense in the context of what's going on in the video. You're like, why would someone use that word? It just seems like very insensitive, right? But that's because we're looking at it through a modern lens. 14 years ago. But wait, was... what, what is insensitive about the word rape? It's a thing that, that happens, and that's the word for it. It's just the context that matters. What is insensitive about the actual word? Common language. You... It's not even like a slur. It's a word you use to describe an, an action. Used in various communities, and that's the community I was coming from. All right? So there's, there's definitely words that are deemed offensive, right? that are in the commentary. And there's nothing I can do about that. I'm not gonna- That's the thing, he doesn't even know which are the words. It's just a blanket statement for everything he's ever said. I'm gonna go back after the fact <clears throat> and completely change all the commentary on that, that stuff, all right? It is what it is. That's why there's a disclaimer at the beginning of the playthrough that says, the language and everything is not representative of the current oh, thing thoughts. And, okay, and so can I- I guess I can make a disclaimer in the beginning of all my streams that it's not representative of who I am and just say literally everything about him that I that comes to my mind and then it's going to be okay as long as you put a disclaimer on it and attitudes of this gamer and even yeah this is a very weird weird thing to discuss I don't even get why we're talking about it right now but I guess he he brought it up so we're talking about it description of every video I upload on that channel it now says FYI, this content is over a decade old. It's representative of a bygone era on YouTube, so don't take offense. This is not something that would be done today, okay? Oh, by the way, I have a Microsoft Flight Sim on the Xbox, so we can fly over the Snort Fort, dude, if we can find it on the map. That's going to be so fun, you guys. This is now a chill stream. So Decompression style. The content on that channel is supposed to be old content that's been lost to time or on the flip side of that some content that i used to do back in the day between the years of 2008 and 2010 before i made this channel dsp gaming basically no one even knows it exists it used to be on my original channel called dark side phil on youtube i stopped using that channel in 2010 and haven't used it since so there's like two years of content on there full playthroughs some of my oldest classic playthroughs but they look awful these playthroughs were used uh, using a camera pointing at a tv they absolutely looked terrible, awful, okay? And the audio, in some cases, so washed out. So it was mono audio, not stereo, because it was a camera. And it sounds like I'm in a cave. It sounds like I'm inside of a tin can, inside of a closet, inside of a giant echoing room, inside of a cave. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> so it's like... You know, people liked that back then because they said, oh, that content looks more genuine. It's like, uh, no, they didn't. That's what you said. That's your excuse for not adopting direct capture when people were actually asking for it and everybody else had done it. And that's why they surpassed you and became actually famous. And you stayed on level one.
like you're sitting next to your friend. But now we're, we're talking about like everybody was saying this. Yeah, Phil, never get direct capture, dude. Or maybe he just cherry picked all the comments that were saying that. So to, to prove his own point. Playing a video game. But today you watch it back and like, oh, the visuals look terrible. I can't even hear what he's saying half the time. You know what I'm saying? So the point of DSP throwback is number one for posterity purposes to represent content that's been lost. My Final Fantasy 13 playthrough, my Red Dead Redemption playthrough, my L.A. Noir playthrough, and a bunch of vlogs and series from back in the day that are not visible anywhere in their full entirety on the internet will now be represented as new content. Okay? There you go. Number two, it could also be a way to present remastered content from my original channels. So again, for example... The Dark Side Phil channel has so much old... Now, look, this is the thing. I don't mind him doing this. This is actually a pretty good idea to remaster your old stuff so they're still watchable for people that like them. But then again, you're making people work for free, and then you're reaping all the benefits, and all they get is an anonymous shout-out. So I don't think that's fair. Because as he admitted in the previous video, it takes somebody 12 to 24 hours for a playthrough, depending on the length. Content on it that a lot of it's been lost to time and no one watches it anymore. But now people would, was, oh, he played this game? I didn't even know he played that game. I'd like to check that out, but not in a 700-part playthrough that sounds terrible and looks like shit. So re-editing these videos, running them through upscaling, running them through an editor that'll combine three parts into one, so now it's a 30-minute video instead of a 9-minute video, a 10-minute video, and a 12-minute video, right? All these things are key. <clears throat> So that's the idea I have for that channel, all right? So a few days ago, we relaunched it with part one of Final We Fantasy relaunched 13. it, him and the okay. crew. And then- Even though that's something I said on the podcast today, even though he shits on all these YouTubers that actually pay their editors and the people filming and all the people doing the thumbnails and stuff, they actually pay them. And he was shitting on them for a fucking decade straight. And now he's one of them and he does it worse and he doesn't pay anybody. So shout out, massive shout out to Phil. And even more massive shout out to insert name here, who actually does all the work. Today I've been releasing one new video. We had part two on Friday, part three yesterday, Saturday, and this morning at 10 a.m., part four went live. So now there's two hours of the Final Fantasy 13 playthrough now live and visible on the channel, okay? Now, what I wanted was feedback. What do you guys think of these videos? What are your suggestions for improvement? What do you think should happen? All right, here's the feedback. I want to share some of this feedback with you because I think this feedback is very, very important to pay attention to and to respond to. It's constructive criticism. By the way, tons of negative idiots over there, and I've ignored them all, but the constructive criticism has been off the charts. So thank you for that, okay? So number one, people are just happy to see this content back. They really are. Like, wow. This is a lost playthrough. I, I remember it from back in the day. And now to be able to watch it back in a modern setting with this, you know, new improvements and editing is great, okay? But some people have some suggestions and issues. Number one, these videos are upscaled to up to 1440p resolution. Yeah, that, that doesn't actually make them look better. It just stretches them out. And uh, to be honest, I would rather just see the original footage because this one has too much ghosting and it just makes me have... Just the motion sickness. Started off originally, it was supposed to be 720p with the digital cameras I had, but it really wasn't. These were fuzzy videos, not clear at all, because I was a camera pointed at a TV with focus issues and things like that. Lighting issues, you know, uh, exposure issues. So, upscaling the videos. They look very different, okay, for sure. They're, they look more clear, but some things look a little weird, admittedly. Um, frame rate. These videos originally were recorded at 30 frames, but weren't 30 frames. They were somewhere in the 20s, I believe. Again, because my camera wasn't really... Yeah, me too. I, I usually never get motion sickness, but those videos do it for me. Because, like, they, they're, like, look terrible. Look at this. The first one, because that's an iconic one. And we got the nice disclaimer. So, look, when there's a lot of motion, it's just, like, nauseating. Frame rate. By upscaling these videos to 60 frames... Look at this. ...using AI, some scenes look amazing. Like, mind-numbingly good. You're watching the cutscenes, or you're watching... Look at this shit. Combat, it blows you away. Like, what the hell? This game looks like almost direct capture 60 frames. This looks so good. But, 
there are definitely certain situations that's causing what's called ghosting. For those who don't know, ghosting is when there's motion on your screen. Ghosting is literally and this right now. There's an issue with the bit rate, or there's an issue with, in this case, AI trying to create artificial frames that don't exist. It creates a ghost effect. Right now, you're not seeing that. It looks pretty good. It looks like a smooth hand moving, correct? But imagine if I was moving this hand that you were seeing ghost images of the hand behind it as it moved. That's called ghosting, okay? And basically, that's what's happening with some of these videos. Is so Ghosting is also when a certain company terminates your merchandise page, and then you write them, and they ignore you. That's also ghosting. The only certain scenes is weird. I was trying to put or my when you go to a certain chain that specializes in fast food and they serve you a bad burger and you cry about it on Twitter and then they ignore you, that's also ghosting. Finger on exactly when it's happening. It looks like the worst parts is when in Final Fantasy 13 you're running around the maps and you're doing some platforming. That's when the ghosting looked the worst. When I was watching the combat, it wasn't apparent, and during cutscenes, it wasn't apparent. It was only the actual like traversal portion of the game. Unfortunately, that's a big part of the game. And I'm like, why, you know, I wonder why. And there's a few theories. Number one, the camera that I was using for Final Fantasy 13 at the start wasn't a Well, I could just say the good old analogy of polishing a turd. Because it's still going to be a fucking turd. Even though you try and polish it, you can add extra, extra flavor to it. You can add extra frames to it. It's still a turd. And those playthroughs are just turds great camera some point during the playthrough i bought a new one because i was taking the videos more seriously and then the video quality improved maybe that would help i don't know number two it could just plainly be that we're going from like 20 some frames to 60 and the ai you know isn't doing a great job and it's it's creating these ghost images so the thing is you know i'm watching it and i'm like well does it really look that bad in some cases i think it does and in others it doesn't and i i actually watched the first three parts of my playthrough last night, okay? Because I wanted to see firsthand what it looked like. Whoa. You were seeing, I wanted to Is see. this supposed to be a brag that he watched his own videos? And I'll be honest, number one, the commentary is funny as shit. It really is. Like, I, haven't, I haven't heard this commentary in 14 years. The last time I heard it was when I recorded it, okay? Oh. Outside of the cringeworthy words that I use that I would never use today, uh -huh. I think it's pretty darn funny. The observational comedy and stuff that I'm doing <laughs> is pretty, pretty, oh my, it's what? timeless. How, how, what? How are you going to fucking suck your own dick to this extent, man? What the fuck? This is like Dave Chappelle watching his own Netflix special and being like, oh my God, look at how funny I am, dude. That's 14 year ago humor and it still works. because How you the fuck are you going to do that? And laugh about it. You know, I mean, this is what other people are supposed to say about you, not you. References. There's a reference coming up to Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie. Who the fuck would understand that reference today? But, you know, it was funny for the time. You know, the Olsen twins. Who the fuck even knows who the Olsen twins are now? But back then, people still remembered Full House, right? So that's what I mean, like... Yeah, we still know who the, the Olsen twins are. It's not like they fucking died or something. Darn funny, I feel. Um, so, that's good. Um, as for the visuals, I think they work about 80% of the time. Meaning, I think it looks damn good 80% of the time. 20% of the time, like, oh, this fucking ghost thing's annoying. And I wish it wasn't doing it, right? But I Yeah, think considering that one of the, the Olsons, Elizabeth Olsen, is actually in the Marvel Cinematic Universe in a pretty significant role. Yeah, I, I think they talk about her more than ever. But anyways, that's just a nitpick. Overall, this is a way more positive thing than a negative. And by the way, the half-hour parts are a godsend. To be able to watch this in half-hour chunks and not have video, video, video every 10 minutes... It was obnoxious back then. I had to do it. I didn't want to make 10 <laughs> he had videos. to do it. YouTube would not allow videos longer than 10 minutes back then. That was the limit. You had to be a, a short video. Or I, g I give him this one. Back then, it didn't really allow for longer than 10 minutes. Your videos. I had reviews that were four parts back then. Because, I, you know, I'm trying to review a game in depth. It's like a 20, 30-hour game. I'm trying to review it in like a half an hour. I have to make three fucking parts. It was ridiculous how YouTube was back then. So, um, overall, I think it looks great. And overall, I'm pleased with the way that it's now presented, okay? That's my take on it. 
But the ghosting is definitely an issue. I agree with people on that. The ghosting is like the one... If the ghosting didn't exist, I think the videos would be perfect. Like, that's the one thing. The thing is, if you're going to upscale to a higher frame rate, you can't really get away from the ghosting. I think it's just going to uh, happen, and there's no real way around it, sadly. So, I guess it is what it is. Like, the ghosting is there, and I can't really stop that, right? Um, so, there you go. Um... So here's some of the feedback I've received, okay, on the videos. Let's Number see what the one, feedback is. People are torn. Half the people want new yin yumi, new delicious radiator fluid to drink to wash down. <laughs> right here. Pig ups. Also, radiator super duper fluid. Shout out to Snort Hogan for that amazing, insane thumbnail of Day SP Downing Hogan's special drink. Yeah. <laughs> I laughed before it began. What an amazing new start. Yeah, dude, I, I like that thumbnail a lot. I showed it up here and we showed it on the podcast today it's really fucking funny big ups uh snow yosef is over of meerkat i guess i'm gonna keep doing these playthroughs in big the ups, upscaled dude. 60 frames and others are of the impression that if i just upscaled it to higher resolution but i just left it at 30 frames that it would be fine some people are totally of the impression just upscale the resolution don't do the frame rate okay i mean fair enough that's a good suggestion we don't really know how it's going to affect things at all, right? Like, we really don't know until we try. So, based on that feedback, tomorrow I'm releasing part 5 of Final Fantasy 13, and I'm actually going to do it at 30 frames per second instead of 60, all right, as a test. We're going to see. You guys, you tell me. You give me your feedback, and I'll probably put... I think I'm going to put in the description... 30 of the video, is going to be much better. Let me know if you think 30 or 60 yeah, is testing. better. Yeah, testing. Um... So we're gonna 30 is definitely better because then the AI doesn't need to make up all new frames. Give it a go tomorrow. It just doesn't guys, make sense you know, having again, it. What's better? It, it won't have any ghosting, okay? But at the same time, it's also not going to have an increased frame rate at all. Okay, so. so you're going to see what it's just like. Why have an increased frame rate if, if having it makes it substantially worse? Like with no frame rate increases, you're going to Like just having something doesn't make it better, Phil. And I know he's not used to this because he just buys stuff because they're supposed to be good and he accept, ex expects everything to be better. Just having something doesn't make it good. It's It actually is sub 30, just to be clear. That's why, because movies could be shot in 60 FPS. They just are not for a reason. Because originally that camera claimed it was 30 frames and it wasn't it was like 20 something so you're, it's gonna be like 20 something frames of animation all right that was the original video okay so let's do one video tomorrow part five let's see what you guys think based on you know your feedback that's what you said a lot of people were like we can't stand the ghosting can you remove my god i have never seen anyone chill for themselves more than phil it's disgusting absolutely it's, it's absolutely day. revolting it, you love yourself phil yeah, I mean, I, I get it, being proud of the work that you've put into something, but this is just like, you're just glazing yourself, dude. And at this point, it just, it, it, it doesn't make any sense. Just stop doing it. Just stop, please. Please! The 60 frames per second and, and give it a go. We'll do that tomorrow. We'll test it. Now, if it ends up not looking that good and the feedback is, okay, never mind, we could just go right back to but the... But yeah, I, I understand him being his own biggest fan, but he doesn't even watch his videos. And back in the day, he didn't even care about the quality of them as long as they made money. So that's not really being your own biggest fan. That's just being up your own ass. Frames, okay? But we're going to test it and see what happens. That's number one. Number two, another suggestion, which I like this suggestion. People were saying, since this is legacy content, you want to be sure people know that. Now, your titles say 2010, your description of your video says any content on this channel is over a decade old, but nobody reads. What you need to do, you may have to make it absolutely clear right from the get-go that these videos are old. Why? So put it in your thumbnail. <clears throat> and I think that was a great suggestion. But I mean, what the fuck? Oh my God. Because you got it plastered all over the place that it's a it's a old videos channel. The channel is literally called DSP Throwback. How much more explicit do you need to make it? It's almost like your fans are just kind of stupid. So as of this morning, you'll notice the thumbnails for the Final Fantasy 13 playthrough now say 2010 right on them. Okay? Part 1 from 2010, and here's the thumbnail, the picture of Final Fantasy 13. Now, if anyone doesn't understand that this is an old playthrough, I don't know what else I could possibly do. Maybe come to their house, knock on their door, and as they click play, say, Hey, I just want to let you know that video you just clicked played on is from 2010. See you later. And then walk away. I mean, 
I don't know what else I could possibly do. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> but there you go. Now, hopefully, people would understand that it's legacy content. This is not my current style of commentary. Okay. Um, so there. That's already been implemented. That change already is implemented. You'll see that on the, on the thumbnails moving forward. When I'm doing these legacy playthroughs, I will put the year of the playthrough on the thumbnail. So that way you know what year that playthrough was originally from. Okay. Sound good? Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, some other feedback. People really like the longer parts. I agree with you. Now, there was always a disagreement about the length of the parts. I think 30 minutes is the sweet spot, and we're going to keep it at that for now. Some people seem to want longer. Some people are okay with the 30. I think 30 is fine. From, my, from what I saw watching the videos back, I want to keep it at 30 frames. So I think that's perfectly fine. Um, but outside of that... That seems to be what everyone's talking about. They're happy the videos are back. They like the longer parts. The thumbnails now are better, and now that it has the year on it will be even better. The only contentious point is the ghosting because of the frame rate increase. So tomorrow, part five comes out at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Give it a look. Let me know what you think. And based on that feedback that I get, we'll have to figure out is this, you know, is this what you want moving forward for the rest of this playthrough? Or do you want to go back to 60? Oh my god, this 60. is so fine. tiresome. I, like, I Get it over with, old like man. 60 frames most of the time. Yeah, okay? of course you do, because you're fucking Phil. It would be good. you think you know, bigger now, equals intro, better. It's looked good to me. And I, I actually started to like the 60 after I watched like two, three videos. I was like, okay, I'm used to it now. This is good. I want this, right? So, please give me your feedback overall, okay? So that's the plan right now. Now... The other overwhelming feedback I'm getting from people is, wow, this looks way better than we thought it would. Could you now start with the other playthroughs too? And you might say, well, what other playthroughs am I talking about? What the fuck happened? Where the fuck did he go? These playthroughs. Oh my god. I found the hard drives of the other lost media. Basically, the media that's been lost... Yeah, this is getting it. skipped, dude. This is actually it, the entirety of of this is getting skipped. We're going live, dude. Okay. You have to see. It's been ages since the channel's been used, quite frankly. Um so I'm not I don't know what would happen there, but I obviously I want to give it a shot. And right now, just so you guys know, initially this viewership you're giving the channel is helping tons, all right? I am more than two thirds of the way. Oh, we're to getting there, dude. For the YouTube Partner Program. Yes. And once he qualifies, he's going to be able to make 60 cents on each one of these videos so he can pay the slaves that are working for him, right? Right? Right, guys? He's, he's going to pay them, right? It takes 12 to 24 hours for a single playthrough. You, you got to play him. You got to pay him. Which is great. I mean, it's really, it's ready to go. This channel He's already so excited, was dude. on the partner program in the past. So it's not like, oh, there would be there's any crazy amount of extra work or effort. It's already ready to go once it requalifies. Now, really it would be up to YouTube to decide how long it would take to repartner it. That's on them. That's not on me. That's on them. Okay. My only plans for the channel right now is putting some ads on the videos. That's it. Not memberships, not super chats, not streams. Eventually, long term, that could be something we do. <laughs> There's a body of work on this channel. Yeah. There we go. This is this is the whole gimmick. This is the whole gimmick. You know what's gonna happen now? He's gonna monetize the channel. He's gonna make fuck all on it, it or like twenty dollars, and it's not gonna be enough to justify him spending the effort. So we're gonna start doing all the weird gimmicks on it just to try and monetize it further. And enjoy. Then we absolutely could consider, hey, do a night stream where for two hours I react to one of my old playthroughs. Really? We laugh at the awful comments. Really? Because when I remember him watching his old playthroughs, he hated them. Because they were boring as sin. And he couldn't even watch his old stuff. Like old vlogs, gameplay, none of that shit. He couldn't watch it for more than like two minutes before cringing and just clicking away. Now get out of here with all this fucking over-promising nonsense. I used to do, but we enjoyed the classic games and we have a good time together. With, you know, retro vibes. Everyone, hey, maybe do a, a random throwback night where, you know, I comment. Is the new on DSP Buzzword being calling his old videos lost media as annoying to anyone else as it is to me? Yeah, I don't I like that shit. Punch him every time he says it. It's it's really obnoxious because it's like it's literally just a buzzword that people use. It's like, oh, it's the lost media iceberg. It's something that he saw on YouTube now, and he's just 
acting like it's it's a thing that applies to him, but it doesn't. I, it's not lost. It's just been sitting in the closet for ten years. Content creator, fifteen years ago, and you got he can call it dusty media. He can for, he can call it just I don't know shitty playthroughs from back in the day. You could ask me questions about what was YouTube like back then. What was it like getting games? You know, so different from today. And you know, what was it like when you uploaded videos? What was the initial feedback? Where would you even go for feedback? Because it wasn't live streaming or anything. You know, so many questions. That I'm sure we have these nice night discussions as a chill stream talking about the old days. So that would be long term. Like for my, my idea for the channel is long term. And then of course, like I said, once these these playthroughs that are missing from the internet are up on the channel, now we can move on to other content. Like we could move on to playthroughs that are on DSP, uh, excuse me, on the original Dark Side Phil channel, but they're not really in the whole modern style, right? We could move on to actually having them uh, be, oh, by the way, I think finally all those 200 gifted memberships went through. So I will update the members in a second here, okay? Um, for example, some of my oldest playthroughs, right? Could be pretty neat to edit those together in a 30 minute part to improve the visuals, put proper thumbnails on them. And have those be on the channel oh, too. What are the right? proper thumbnails? So now, let's look at the thumbnails, dude. Let's look at the thumbnails. They're very exciting. Those older channels, you don't have to worry about that old style. Whoa, this is what we're so proud of. A thumbnail with a, a character's face on it in a number. And then it says 2010 because, of course. Everything is now more modern and di more digestible for an audience, and now people can watch the old stuff and enjoy it while still checking out all of my new stuff daily on DSP Gaming 2. You have your choice, your pick, right? A lot of people have always said over the years, I like old school Phil better. Then go watch old school Phil. What's to stop you? Oh, well, the videos look like shit. They're only 10 minutes long. Half of them are muted for music and copyright issues. But I, I thought Old Phil was bad, and you don't want to endorse Old Phil behavior because Old Phil was a toxic drunk who hated his life and was super toxic to everybody. But now, yeah, if you like Old Phil, go check it out, dude. I'm advertising it. We're going to put Old Phil on a fucking billboard. You, uh... The, 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 you know, the, the, he spent years separating himself from who he used to be. Years. Since like 2019 or something. Since he did like the project, uh, the, the pro Jared debunk stream. He separated himself from who he used to be back in the day. And now he's putting himself on a fucking t-shirt and he's selling it to everybody. You know, uh, metaphorically. Looks like shit. I can't, I, you know, commentary is terrible because the audio sounds like shit. Well, we'll fix all that. There you go, right? So, please continue to give me. Your oh yeah, now now old Phil is just classic Phil. That's how it is. It's not the bad Phil. It's the classic Phil. Positive and constructive feedback. That's what I need. I don't need troll. Oh, I just hate DSP. Gee, thanks for the comment, moron. Then why are you here? <laughs> to get you pissed Man, off? You know, I really hate. Nicki Minaj. So what I do is I buy all of her albums and I listen to all of her music and I go to her concerts and I say how bad it is and I vlog about how I hate her. No, that's not equivalent though. It would be if somebody was saying that they hate you and then they keep uh, giving you fucking gifted memberships and tips. It's not the same thing. Or you just don't listen to Nicki Minaj. You just, you do other things with your life, right? But sadly, some people can't stop themselves from hate watching content, right? That's the kind of <clears throat> stuff you don't I don't need that feedback what I want is hey what can I improve what can be better what would you like and I'm listening that's why the thumbnails are improved that's why we're going to try 30 frames per second instead of 60 frames per second on tomorrow's part 5 of Final Fantasy 13 we're learning all right <clears throat> so let's see what happens let me know your feedback tomorrow I'm very curious about your feedback on tomorrow's video because now you're going to see the difference between the 60 to the 30 and I get the feeling some people might like it and some people might be like, oh, why is it, you know, why does it not look as good? So give me your feedback. We'll go from there and, uh, and we'll continue on positively with this new project. Remember guys, he's not just about the money as he monetizes his audience over three channels. Yeah, it's not just about the money, but the goal of this channel is to get monetized. Okay. All right. And that's, again, that's how it is. What I think we'll do. You no, know, so it can, it can justify even bothering with all this shit because it's not all about the money. It's also about the content that we can monetize. Let's of course. out Final Fantasy 13 for at least a week, right? Let's just have it be videos of Final Fantasy 13. Then perhaps we'll start to alternate. 
either LA Noir or Red Dead Redemption. Maybe I'll either put a then we'll all. Oh, wow. I can skip to the present, dude. And I jumped through That's quite a bit. My classic playthroughs for 15 years. Ago. Oh, my God. He's it's still on about awesome. this. All comes full circle. <clears throat> there you go. Okay. Uh, Gatezra. He never stops, members, dude. He Sunday never stops. And all. Thank you very much, Gatezra. Uh, let's get over to the tip side of things here. <clears throat> okay. Oh, we're actually doing shout outs now. He updated the members and he removed the goal because that's how positive this stream has been because he got like 200 members. Here. Epic. Epic content. Well, interesting. Is it? Now I, I totally 100% think I'm seeing what is going on. Oh, he figured it out, dude. Yeah. You guys are finished. Hold on. All the haters are I busted. I think... Okay, let me explain something. First of all, let me just double check something as well as I'm about to explain something. So... No friends to dollar, so he doing it to his past self. Oh yeah, he can't he can monetize his friends anymore, so he's just monetizing himself again from the past. What's the next way he can monetize himself? What's what's another way he can do it? Because like we're kind of running out of ways to make money off of him. He's running out of ways to monetize himself. Which is pretty crazy. Give me one second. Oops, what did I just hit? Shit, did I hit the right one? Hold on. We're getting there. <laughs> I swear we're getting there. Hey, guys, I found him on the map, you guys. I found him. I'm about to fly over his house and drone strike him. Expect something dramatic to happen on his stream. Look at this. I'm going to get him, dude. Right now it's 12.17 p.m., is it? It might be. Ah, oh, crap, I did the wrong one. <sighs> you guys have absolutely no idea what I'm doing right now. I'm basically trying to check out stuff. Like what? Behind the scenes. Yeah, can you do that behind the scenes and not during a podcast? What happens is... I think we're supposed to be entertained right now, and we're kind of not, because the dude is just meandering and wasting everybody's time. Even one of my regulars, this tends to happen, okay? Is someone will tip me. And I'll say, oh, well, I wanted to shout this out. But for some reason, PayPal is saying that this is now, like, under review, right? And it's very suspicious when this happens because no one knows why this happens. And sometimes it's like a tip will come through and I don't recognize the person. It's under review. It's like, all right, well, I don't trust it, right? But... There have definitely absolutely been times when tips come in from longtime supporters, right? And it's still like the tip will get get frozen under review. And we're staring at it like, why? Why is it under review? It's bizarre that it is because it's a regular. It's someone who always like tips or contributes. So why would it be under review? I'm beginning to believe now that it is a random selection process. I actually am starting to believe that it's just every <laughs> what once is this in a while, bullshit? PayPal flags something. You Why know, are we doing the airport, this? And sometimes they say, sorry, you're just the random selected person that we have to screen at the airport for security sure. purposes. And they take you aside and then they screen you. I think that's exactly what this is. Because now I've seen multiple regulars have their contributions, like their tips get randomly flagged. Which is really, really silly um, that that happens. But... It happens. I've seen it happen multiple times to people now, okay? So in this in this case, okay? In this case, um we've got a $25 tip. So I'm flying over Seattle, you guys, right now. And it got flat. Expect expect and the bomb to drop. Review. And it's not now, a sub bomb, it's not a member bomb. Literally tips every single it's day. It's a real bomb. Why would I not trust one minute man, right? Never I once. Know, maybe it's a issue. fake one minute. But man. for some reason, his tip got flagged today. So I do. I'm starting to believe it is a random process where they just randomly grab a contribution and say, "We're gonna flag. We're gonna flag this one for." They review. randomly okay. grab a contribution. So in this case, <laughs> being that I trust one minute man, he's been a supporter for how many years? We're gonna count it. So it's a twenty-five dollar tip from one minute man. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, 
<clears throat> okay. I think this is actually a quick and good topic to cover. All right. What? Because the PayPal. Here's what Minuteman has to say. Oh my god. In regards god. to your upcoming documentary, if this entire thing just becomes a he said, she said, and there's no way to prove anything either way, it's just going to be fodder for detractors and no benefit to you at all. First of all, I want you to understand something. This this documentary is not for my detractors. My detractors already have 500 documentaries. You understand? And they're all negative. 100% negative. Zero positive. No no pushback. No other perspective. It's literally just 100%. Yeah, One Minute Man seems stuff. very oh. scared by this for some reason. This documentary is whatsoever. Okay? That's number one. Number two, what you have to understand is that this documentary is not super long. This is not a three-hour endeavor. These documentaries, like this Mike Clum documentary about me, will probably be on target probably about an hour long. Okay? It's going to cover a tremendous amount of topics, including me growing up. Who well, fucking life, cares? Like, kid, how I got into gaming. How I got into competitive Street Fighter. Uh, well, like, who fucking cares how dark side Phil got into fucking gaming? Who is this gonna appeal to? Not even the normies are gonna care about how dark side Phil fucking got into gaming. It's just the trolls gonna care because we're looking for any kind of lore that might be interesting and funny. The normies are not gonna care. The DSP fans already know about this. That influenced me in my earlier years. How that turned me into a young adult who was interested in games. How I got into YouTube. My history as a YouTuber. All of this stuff, like, I, there's going to be an entire day where I'm just going to be interviewed about my history as a YouTuber, and those that information will be clipped up to be used as this docu part of the documentary. You understand? Like, this is not, oh, for an hour, it's everyone riffing on Phil, and then we just get Phil's responses. That's that's not that's not the point. In fact, when you are doing a documentary like this, okay, the whole point is to keep it moving and keep it interesting and to cover a wide variety of topics and information. Will there be segments in this documentary where basically things will be talked about that are negatives about me? Yes. Will there be segments that are going to talk about all the controversial things that my detractors mention? Yes. Will they be dwelled upon and fully fleshed out and or hammered in? No. Oh, so it's useless. So it's, not, it's literally going to be a he said, she said then. Exactly what One Minute Man said. Well, thanks, Phil. The point of the so we're going to talk about the things everybody want to know about, such as his addiction to spending all his fucking money on sweaty man JPEGs. But we're not going to be fully fleshing it out. So he's just going to say that he didn't do it and that wasn't him. And we're just going to move on, I guess. Documentary. You see? It's supposed to be an actual documentary about me... And, and, and my life and all the struggles that I've had. And yes, we're going to address all the It's going to be a dude. It's going to be a documentary about all the struggles that he's had. We fucking know about this. And we're just going to hear about it again. Oh, man. It's all going to come out. And there's going to be other. I'm, I'm quickly losing faith about this. Active. That's when why I hear him talk about it to other people. If it were just me talking, this would be the most boring one sided documentary. If it were just people who don't like me talking this would be the most boring one-sided documentary do you see if it were people who only like me talking and not me like what if it was people who know me my family members my fans talking and it was only them that also would be boring the whole point is to encompass the whole gamut of the entire situation why is the name dark side phil a name that is so contentious and a name that people know on the internet why do people care about me do people really know the truth of me or just the memes of me? That's really what the documentary is going to be covering. You understand? A lot of this stuff. You see what I'm saying? So that's the point. And I think that's what people are not getting. They're thinking, oh, it's just going to be the entire thing is he's going to reach out to Review Tech USA and to this other person who doesn't like Phil. And they're just going to rag on him for an hour. And we're just going to get his no, responses. That's, and that's the documentary. No, that, that nobody thought it was going to be this. It's not even close. Trust me on this. That's not even close to what this is at all. And ultimately, I'm involved fully. I'm going to know everything that's in this thing. There's no surprises or things. That, oh, my God, I didn't know that was going to be in it. No, I'm going to know everything that's in it. You got to understand something, all right? This is going to be the one time in my life that I basically am going to allow something like this to happen, meaning this level of trust, access. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> This is a big liability for everyone involved, including Mike. If Mike accidentally 
puts something out in this documentary that then harms me, he's liable. Uh oh. Uh oh. You know? So you gotta be like what harms him like what? His reputation? Harms him like what? Oh, that's that sounded like a threat to me. That sounded like an insurance policy to make sure that Mike is only gonna put out nice stuff about Phil. Or mostly nice stuff about Phil. Cause as you guys know, everything fucking hurts this guy. You can be fucking Review Tech USA and make a stream making a bunch of jokes about how Phil jerked off in 2016, and this fucking hurts him. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, we are all being very careful about how this is going about. Give me a it's fucking break. Respectfully and fairly. What a clown show. And I think that's what people just don't aren't, aren't understanding. You have only seen negative stuff to tossed towards me for so long. Everyone is shell-shocked from the negativity and can't possibly believe there'd be a Give real a documentary about Darkside Phil. Well, there's going to be. That's what this is going to be. And by the way, I keep telling you guys, this is going to be f fun. Okay? This is going to be interesting. There's going to be stuff in here you have never seen before, even if you're a staunch supporter or a staunch hater of me. There's going to be stuff in this documentary you've never seen before or didn't know about. Or it's going to be fleshed out to a level you never understood before because it never gotten to that level. Okay? So... Like this what? Is, the boring stuff. The boring stuff. It's how Phil got raised in a Catholic school. It's like how Phil got into fighting games with T and John Rambo and all those other people in the fucking late 90s. The boring shit that he thinks is interesting because he thinks he's way more interesting than he actually is in all the ways that are he's just uninteresting. If this is, is mostly even about his gaming shit and his fucking YouTube career, it's gonna be worthless. Nobody fucking cares about this. If Phil has Final Cut, the dog is garbage. Uh, it depends. It really depends. I guess I'll still wait and see, but what he's saying right here is not giving me a lot of confidence. Telling you, this is different. But I, I completely and utterly understand why people don't trust Mike. I get it. He's done one documentary on YouTube so far. That's his only track record. It was a documentary about Boogie that was super dark and sad because that's what they were going for. And there's not been a single real person on YouTube besides some people could argue the quartering gave me a fair interview many years ago, right? The quartering didn't give a fuck. He could have been just... He might as well have been sitting there clipping his toenails the whole, the whole fucking time. Because he didn't give a fuck. He just cared about getting some clicks off of this dude because he's a lol cow. Do a contest where you have to explain a concept like DSP. It could be history style, science style, religion style, ETC style. That would be, that would be pretty interesting, actually. We've had some of those uh, callers sending in bits kind of like that. But that's a, that's a good suggestion, dude. But outside of that, Big up Snow Signal for the contribution. Right who's always trying to make a buck on my behalf, anything they say negative gets a rise out of their viewing audience, so just go for the jugular, right? Yeah, maybe maybe yeah. that's just uh, because it's true. Maybe. It's I don't know. Trust me, I wouldn't be involved with this if that's not what this is. This is not some kind of a crazy bait and switch, okay, at all. So don't worry about that, okay? And what's absolutely hilarious is these insane conspiracy theorists. Oh, did you know... That Mike Klum is funded by Keemstar? What the? <laughs> what are you talking what? about? What? <laughs> he is huh? funded by Keemstar. No. <clears throat> He's not funded by Keemstar. Well, where, where's your evidence exactly? Where's your evidence? Right now, if you can present me with documents showing that all of the business endeavors that Mike Klum has run in his lifetime have been funded by Keemstar, that all the video, his whole business, he has a whole full time business. Outside of this documentary stuff he's doing for YouTube, that's incredibly successful. So if you can prove to me that that's actually funded by Keemstar, then I'll pull the plug on the documentary. But what if I, it's so stupid? Why are you even addressing this? Why why are we doing this? You might as well be talking about the Earth being flat and shit. I don't think that's going to happen. Okay, <laughs> like where are you coming up with this stuff? I don't really, know. Just people get this crazy. We're not know, this nonsense out of nowhere. I just don't understand where people, it's like people are- We all, we all know that Mike is funded by Tevin, obviously. Who was thinking about Keemstar? Also, I don't know where DSP's house is, so I'm just gonna crash into one of these houses and let's just pretend it's DSP. There we go. We're about to kill him right now. Yeah! And I missed, but that's all right, because it didn't blow up. That was actually his house. There we go, we got him, you guys. There you go. He's, he's done. He's, it's over. Determined to find drama. They're determined to find this stuff. You know what I mean? 
So so far, I've literally fielded all of your apprehensions. I have literally listened to everything that you guys have had to say, and I completely understand your concerns. But the things that you Keemstar come at me dark with, money like, conspiracy alien. Yeah, it's the the Keemstar blood money is funding this documentary. Of course, of course it is. Like Mike is funded by Keemstar are completely unfounded nonsense. But why okay? why would you talk about it then? It's ridiculous, ridiculousness. <laughs> That's like if he if he started like debating whether or not he's on the Epstein flight logs and stuff. Like why why would you even do that if it's just such made up bullshit? Cuz we always need to jump to the extremes because the extremes are easy to debunk. <clears throat> anyway, so let's get off the topic of the documentary now, shall we? Thank you, One Minute Man for the tip, which I did count despite the fact it got frozen or suspended. I'm sure it's going to get cleared up. I hope, um, I hope until there's actual development on the documentary, he just shuts the fuck up about it. Because I think at this point, everybody who kind of cares about it has made up their mind as to what they think it's going to be. And this kind of rambling from him it doesn't really make any sense, doesn't really mean anything. But there was one nice segment where he implied that anything that Mike puts out that has the possibility to hurt him, and of course we didn't exactly explain what hurting him might mean, makes Mike liable. So that kind of sounded like a threat to me. It definitely sounded like a threat. Thank you for your concern. Again, I don't think once, when this product comes out, because that's what it is, it's going to be a one hour crazy high production value thing about me. I think you're going to understand it's going to be interesting. Even if you li love me, even if you hate me, even if you're somewhere in between, I think this is going to be a highly entertaining thing for everybody. All right? It's not only for one it's not for people who just dislike me it's not at all for that that's not the purpose of it this is supposed to be appealing to people if you someone who casually heard the name dark side phil and you know me from a meme or you've heard a little bit about me but then you know about the hate sphere around me but that's it this documentary is going to give you an hour of entertainment that you're finally going to know about me and maybe after this some people will be like i'll give phil a fair shake and i'll check out his content and maybe others will say i'll never i'm not interested in that guy whatsoever i don't want to care about him and that's all fine, right? But at least it's done. 100% it's there. And it's the only time that I'm ever going to say, hey, that's it. You want your answers on anything about my life, my history, who I am as a content creator, who I am as a person, watch the documentary. But what about this and what about... Watch the documentary, right? There you go. Okay, I received a second $5 tip for one minute man and he just wanted to assure me he's like just so you know oh that my first god. tip for some reason got randomly flagged oh my god it's under review but it should be resolved within a few days you're absolutely right again oh, now that i've so seen fucking that stupid. one minute man's tip got flagged that a hundred percent tells me that it's a randomized process that every once in a while got it getting can we get to skip to the react are we still doing this nonsense is he still talking Hmm, we're about to find out, you guys. It's going to be very exciting when we find out that he is still giving shout-outs. Ever had in history? Yep, he's still giving shout-outs. There's only two other times in all of history that I got bigger member bombs than that, and once was ages ago over on Twitch, and once was... I want to say it was either fall of 2011 or fall of 2012. Bruh, uh, 20, what are you talking about? Fall of 2021 or fall of 2020. Dude, this, this is what I'm fucking talking about. Because uh, this fucking stupid fucking cuck, what was his name? Um, Team Ico Gamer purchased bots just so he can wail the fuck out. And now we don't even get a fucking mention. He doesn't even exist. It never happened. Never happened. And this dude gave him thousands of dollars. Thousands. And I was just didn't happen. It doesn't exist. Two. And that was when we had over a thousand members here. Right? And he so also had over a thousand. Third biggest ever member bomb on the channel which is oh my awesome. god Thank you again so much when did this happen support. anyone who got a gifted membership this morning i hope you enjoy that is absolutely awesome right cool <clears throat> okay oh uh, see so someone's completely incorrect with some information they're saying in the chat someone said why did phil's videos used to only be 10 minutes long 
And some people are like, well, it's because they had to be 10 minutes long to monetize. That's completely the opposite situation. Back in the day, YouTube did not allow clips longer than 10 minutes. Maybe you could get away with 11. Yeah, we got that, that dude. <laughs> 12 videos. I got to do it. That's That was their limit. It had nothing to do with monetization. In fact, you could not even monetize gameplay videos on YouTube unless you had a partner network. Okay? And even then... It didn't really actively start until early 2011 is when they started active monetization. It literally happened. So uh, we had the episode on the podcast about that on October 23rd, 2022. So it happened October 2022 when the dude bought bots just so DSP can get fucking memberships. And now he doesn't even fucking exist. That dude never happened. And the, the current dude is now the best until the next dude allow it unless you was going to be the best partner network that would take that liability away and they would take on the responsibility of that then they would allow the monetization but remember i was uploading videos as early as 2007 so uh, for an entire three year you know 2007 all the way through uh early 2011 when i got partnered with machinima thousands upon thousands of videos i uploaded were never monetized they were all for free just for fun that was it that was the only reason. Yeah, it's almost like YouTube is made for that. And then what happened was people were used to that. So even when they said to everyone, hey, you can make longer videos, my fans and viewers were already used to that level. That's some absolute bullshit. There's no way you can convince me they would rather have 10 to 20, 30 videos in their sub box every day instead of two or three. There is no way you can convince me that. That's just some rewriting history 101 right here. Video upload and said, keep doing it. I said, hey, do you want longer videos? Eventually I did, eventually I went to like 20 minutes, then 30 minutes, and now I'm doing an hour, right? But that was a slow transition over time. People wanted the sh the, uh, the shorter videos at that point because they were used to them. By the way, pretty thematic is uh, I'm playing Slop Field and I have a mission that you're supposed to literally go around and beg people for donations. That's just the fun fact. And until finally people over the many, many years finally kind of transitioned and convinced me to change them, right? So there you go. <clears throat> uh, Derek, I see, your, I see your message here. I guess I'll have to figure it out. Remember, everything here is set in a playlist now. Oh, yeah, here's the message. Like. Okay, so at DSP Gaming, for my birthday, for my birthday video from Lil Suckin' Cuck, I sent you an email an hour ago with three videos attached. I checked and you can preview all three parts in the same email. Oh man, the, the entitlement of Derek is wild. For the show today? What a fucking bum. Everything here is set in a playlist that I did last night. And again, I don't know what happened with those videos last night, but they weren't available. So I can't make any guarantees that we're gonna be watching any other videos today than what's in the playlist. We already have a full thing queued up here, you understand? I'm not saying that we'll never watch it. I'm just saying I'm already good to go for today. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and so it, it, he's not going to watch it. He's not watching the Derek Cuck video. Definitely not. Play and we watch and react. So no guarantees. If, if, <laughs> at, the, at the least, maybe next week, you know. Okay. All right, any last-minute stuff, guys, before we uh, we adjourn and we do get set up for the react show? Because we... That's it. We're doing the react show, and then tomorrow I'm back. Can we just well, do the react me, show? Um, please give me your feedback on DSP Throwback. Now there's four parts of Final Fantasy 13 live. I hope that you'll check them out. And, and you know, tomorrow morning is the big test where we're going to 30 frames instead of 60 because you guys said to get rid of the ghosting. Oh my so God! Stop! How many times? And what did you like better when we were doing the 60 How? frames? Or Whoa! When we were doing the 30 frames the right? the breakdown of this podcast is gonna be generational man the the amount of time he spent on this fucking bullshit with the frames let me know oh. your feedback and we'll go from there okay so i'm excited i am i'm excited for the channel and the growth and everyone who uh likes this content and the effort that's going into it and i can't wait to keep keep it up there's the potential there's huge potential there for that channel to now be used daily for awesome positive stuff as opposed to just me uploading the new stuff here, having the legacy stuff. Now you got all. Oh my stuff. God! Go check react, dude! Go time. react! Already have the feelings about it. Get away from here! Go back and check it out too, right? It's pretty cool. Yeah, and Derek says. Oh, that was you, Finn.
Yeah, Derek says, at DSP Gaming, we can do it next Sunday then, since Lil Suckin' Cuck worked hard on it. Sounds good to me. Sounds good with me. Lovecraft, I didn't know. You, uh, you hadn't put your name into the message. He says he was the one. Oh, who this is so stupid, man. Because, you thing. know, when you're a, a YouTuber kind of guy, you kind of attract the audience that you deserve to have. Because if you're having the audience that Darkseid Phil has, then you're kind of like them, you know? If you're attracting Derek's, you're, you might be a Derek yourself. Because otherwise, they wouldn't find appeal in you. So they can flock to you like, like Derek and Jade and OIC and all these other fucking individuals. Yep, fan of Lovecraft. Derek, yes, it's potential we could do it next weekend. There is right. potential, there yes. Is potential. Yes. He's so oh, fucking yeah, he, sick of Derek. He, he, he hates Derek so much. <laughs> we just be resubmitted for next week's reaction. <laughs> and I could put it into the playlist that way, okay? Okay, I think it is time to end the show. Dude. Great podcast today. <laughs> Tons to talk about. By the way, you might be saying, you know, Bro, you haven't talked about... This fucking quest, so I'm, I'm playing Slopfield, and the whole quest is about going around asking people to donate to some charity. Literally just begging. Uh, and the thing is that none of them refuse, so all you gotta do is just go there and click on them, and they give you the money. So what, what's even the point of, like, having this quest? When all you got to do is just activate the thing. Oh, my God. I love Todd Howard. He's the best. Game news in a couple days. There's really nothing going on. I did check. There's really nothing going on right now. Very minor stuff. We can maybe talk about some of that tomorrow. But in the meantime, thank you for watching the Level 1 Podcast. Thank you for the positivity. Thank you for the feedback. Thank you for the support. I really appreciate you all being here every day and hanging out. And those who watch on demand as well, thank you so much. Please give me <clears throat> feedback on everything. Your feedback is key. That's how I improve. And I hope to see you tomorrow when I'll be talking about All right. the show. I'll be telling Time you for the other channel. DSP reacts. <clears throat> and we, we might have to fill in some time because, of course, he hasn't started yet. And when he starts, he's going to run music for like 20 minutes, which is going to give me plenty of time to readjust my layout so I can feature this chat instead of the other chat. And I can't wait for Phil to react to all the quality videos that he's been sent this week because, whoa, there's so many of them. I don't know how his uh, channels have been doing in terms of memberships. I might just check that out in the meantime or check out some of the older videos that he's put out because, um, as you all know, they're great and uh, we all love them because we are the, the true fans. I just launched the grenade, but you can't see it because I changed the layout, so it doesn't matter. So let's see what we got here. We got candy shops, conspiracy in the UK slash Godzilla. What? What is this title? Candy shops, conspiracy in the UK slash Godzilla slash how Vimeo tank. That's a um, very coherent video, I guess. Then we have me from 2013. Three PS3s. Frodo and Sam play Baldur's Gate 3. Oh, wow. I... Uh... Wow, I can't figure out why this channel isn't way more popular. Okay, ladies, gentlemen, everybody. Oh my god, he's below 100. Wow, this channel really is in the mud. God damn. Rest in peace, bozo. Pack watch. Else, it's time for part five of six of DSP versus the Internet, episode 45, the last episode of the year of 2023. We've had a good variety of stuff. This Let's see what's next. All right, hello everyone. Dark Side Phil here, and who's this asshole? And who submitted this clip? I'm very offended already. He's hideous. Oh, so this is actually, New Year's 2013 vlog and resolutions. I'm actually pretty curious of. Uh, this is me from 10 years what ago. We got Look, New Year's 2013 vlog, time off and resolutions. Now you know. I wonder, is this video, um, my actual video from New Year's 2013? When I say that. Is this New Year's Eve 2013 or is this New Year's Day? Because it could be, I'm, I mean, I was still in Connecticut for both, right? But I'm curious which it was because I don't know if this is the, is this the end of 2012, early 2013? Or is this the end of 2013, early 2014? It's at least 10 years old, right? All right, so let's see what this is going to be about. So... Can we First actually all, start watching my it? My tongue is dyed a weird color. Oh my god, now we get a frame by frame analysis. It's like he's me. Haha, <laughs> look at my tongue. Why is my tongue that color? Uh, because you've been drinking too much. Uh, my tongue is perfectly colored now.
And now we get this. Okay, for all you connoisseurs, uh, I'm gonna enhance this so you get to see the whole whatever the fuck this is. He does a nice little TikTok girl pose. This. Like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> get him out of here. Get this guy out of here. Motherfucker! I wonder why his tongue was a weird color. Maybe I was drinking an energy drink that day. Maybe we're just drinking in general. Um, that hat is the hat that I had for a very long time, the Bullet Bill Beanie, which I loved, and then I lost it. I lost it many years ago. I must have had it in my back pocket when I was out, and then I checked. I was like, it's gone. So I've never gotten it back. Um, back when I used to wear beanies, because back then I didn't like to do my hair every day, so I would just toss a beanie on over my messy hair, and that's how I would have it for videos. As you can see, I'm definitely heavier in that video than I am today. My face is much more chubby. By, um, by a little bit. Really, just just by a little bit. It's not like he lost weight by living um, healthy. It's more like he lost weight out of stress. And he got older looking because of stress. Uh, but that shirt, I wonder if I even have that shirt. It might be a Uniqlo shirt that I still own today. In the background, oh, yeah. number right, that is my punch out you painting, still got tits though which i actually have right here in the closet i'm staring at it right now but it was always incredibly hot in that condo okay what's the how many things you think is gonna how many minutes you think is gonna take him to actually start the video let's do a little experiment so here we're at two and a half minutes and okay so here he actually starts it at three I really care that that much to be honest yeah so. he starts it at uh, three minutes anyway. something so I guess this is the vlog from 10 years ago, the end of 2013. And I guess now I just did a podcast this morning, all right, where I talked all about my reminiscing about 2023 and what I'm looking forward to in 2024, you know, positive, negative stuff. I'm very curious what I say in this video from 10 years ago. Me too. Can we just watch it? No. All right. And happy new year. And you might be saying, well, Phil, you're recording this before New Year's. Why are you saying that? Uh, because this week... I'm going on break. So the purpose of this video is to explain to you how I'm going to handle that break, what you can expect, and when I'm coming back. What? All right. So. <clears throat> wow, I just so much more chubby back then. No, not Probably, really. I would guess in this video I'm between 220 and 230. I know. Like, okay, my, my thought process behind why he focuses on being fat in the past is that maybe recently, a couple of months ago, he went to the doctor and they told him that if he doesn't start living more healthy, something really bad's going to happen. And he's looking back and he's trying to kind of cope with the fact that he's not living healthy by comparing himself to back then when he used to look like this, which is not that big of a difference, really. He still has man tits. Right now, I'm, I dance around 200 pounds. Sometimes I'm above it. Sometimes I'm below it. Uh, but that's a good 20, 30 pounds extra. You can see it in my face. You can see it in my chest and everything, right? The final Way stream heavier. of 2013 is in the back. And what a year 2013 has been for me, kind of reminiscing a little bit about all the stuff that went down this year. All the time. My title's wrong. I don't know why. Because I'm reminiscing about 2013. I can title Right, that was the year where after many, many years of people yelling at me, saying, why in the holy hell are you not doing great after oh, right? yeah, the camera? That was the year. The live people argue I did live I adore the live people audience. So basically, it really wasn't. Like, I was screaming. Ah, uh, shit. Fucking, fucking, fucking shit. Fuck, shit, said fuck. It was just fan service. That was a huge Shut the fuck step. up, dude. I went to get some random food that I can find, and during this time, this dude started bumping heavy ass beats. Like this shit. This is fucking terrible. I'm sorry about this. That was very reckless for me. Assuming that I can let a DSP video play and nothing terrible is gonna happen while I'm gone. It took me so many years, four years of live streaming before I actually became more interactive, and oh then. Oh my god. It took him five in almost a half minutes to get through 40 seconds. Improved. I mean, I was just an idiot for not doing that right from the get-go. Direct result <clears throat> of the direct capture and the live streaming. Um, it's been a wild ride. This year in particular was a very exciting, but it was also very risky. And at least I'm happy to say that here we are at the end of 2013 and through the many trials and tribulations that I've been- By the way, this camera is supposed to be 1080p. Does it look 1080p to you? 
I mean, just compare my. I think my webcam now. This is 480p. What you're looking at is better quality than the camera I used 10 years ago. Yeah, no. maybe you just didn't configure it properly. Because DSP is the plug-and-play guy. He expects to take something out of the box, plug it in, and then it instantly works at the best of its ability without having any kind of configuration. That's that's what kind of guy he is. He doesn't even read the manual. He just plug it in the power, dude. That was supposed to be a 1080p video right there. That is, <laughs> That looks like four, maybe 480 if you're pushing it, right? Pretty bad. Through... I'm still here, I'm still positive, I'm still pushing forward, and it's looking like 2014 may be a better year even more because of great positive things that I'm trying to plan out, including, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> in January contacting a realtor and the possibility of getting the hell out of this cramped condo where my internet is intermittent, where I just don't have enough room to do the kind of stuff that I want to do. and moving Cramped into a condo, place. by the way. The cramped condo that he cramped with a bunch of garbage. A bunch of statues and boxes and everything. If you cleaned out all that shit, you can actually have a pretty cool apartment to live in. The condo wasn't all that bad. Somewhere else in the country where the weather's better, where I'll have more space to do filming. I've had so many ideas for series and stuff. Where if I had a studio where I could film and have a green screen and do all kinds of stuff that I could... <laughs> so here I am 10 years ago talking about being in a studio with a green screen today i don't have a studio but i have a dedicated room for filming and as you can see my visual quality has dramatically improved my background looks great compared to what i used to do right so I, the thing was all the rage back then was green screen green screen and quite honestly i don't feel like green screen was ever needed i never did the people who use green screen are typically people who don't have a good background or good quality camera, and they just want us to have them superimposed over the What camera. is good about his current background? Just look at that shit. It looks like a Romanian flea market, dude. It looks super poverty. Like, come on. Maybe for a long time that And then, like, giving himself compliments, looking back at a video that's 10 years old. I mean, of course your video should look better now than they did 10 years ago, you fucking idiot. Would it benefit me? But now I don't think it does. Like, now I think my stuff looks fine, right? But... That's just funny because everyone back then, as soon as I went streaming, they were like, green screen, green screen. And I couldn't do a green screen there in the condo. So they were wrong and Positive stupid, I guess. Ago. I thought he changed lol. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess it depends on uh, whatever nar narrative he wants to push. He was positive 10 years ago. That's why he's re-uploading his videos from back then. It just wasn't possible, right? But also he was very toxic and depressed and he hated his life. Go figure. Do amazing stuff and I've never had that. And that's my goal for this year coming up. My resolution for 2014 is to at least start, seriously start the process of moving out of here and into the next phase of my life. I Which I did. By the end of 2014, I had moved. I was living here. You know, it was around July, I think, June, July, that I moved here that year. I can't just be here anymore. This place, quite honestly, for me, was a place for me in 2009 when I moved here to kind of be like a bachelor pad. I was single, I wanted to move closer to my job and obviously out of my parents' house, which I had moved back to after uh, getting fired, or not, wasn't, yeah, from fired from Best Buy years before, which is a long story, I've talked about it before, I'm not gonna get into it now. And, uh, you know, moving on with my adult life, and that was an important step for me to get out of there, for me to be here, to be self-supportive, which I've been. Now it's time for me to take the next step, get a bigger place, a place where I can move in with my girlfriend, where I'll have more space to be more professional with what I do. Okay, and really when it comes down to it, that's what it's about. Not only having better weather, having better internet, uh, but also moving to the next. Fast forward a little bit. <laughs> what? And it's a piece he of can't crap. even watch his true. own fucking videos. I really appreciate that you guys have been patient and have stuck in there. But the thing was in 2013 when I started streaming, people finally realized my internet sucked because I'd never done a live feed before. It was always just upload a video and on-demand videos hell if the internet breaks up or whatever who cares right it wasn't a big deal but when i was finally live streaming people saw how messed up and how bad honestly my internet was because at the time when i streamed it would crap out it would chop up it would drop it would come back it would look like shit and people were like well, can't you fix that and i tried i tried having the text come out to that condo and they were like no can't do nothing because it's all in the basement and unless you rewire all that equipment there's nothing we can do to fix it so I was never going to have better internet living there. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you're right. 
I'm being told you can re-enable your logo on screen. Absolutely, thank you. I totally forgot. There we go. Why? Okay. Why? Because Lock Look at how fucking massive the watermark is. Oh my god. People, when there's changes, god they damn it. Run. Oh no, something's. That's a transformative watermark, you guys. Otherwise, he's gonna get taken down. By the way, he is still playing music, which is fucking crazy to me because he was just streaming. How does it take him so long to set up a fucking stream that's already just there? It's changed. I don't like it. I'm gone. A lot of you gave me the benefit of the doubt. You stuck in there with me this year. And here we are at the end of the year. And I'm more positive than ever at this point. That's right. Really looking forward to the changes next year, which is going to be more location changing and stuff like that. It's going to be great. Okay. Um, and even through all the other bullshit, the negativity that we had, the overwhelming amount of nonsense. People, oh, Phil, Phil, you know, Phil doesn't play games well, so he's a jerk. And we're going to make montage videos of and all that stuff. So that's, that's this is how you don't play, right? And remember... That my reaction to This Is How You Don't Play was incredibly negative when it first started and got very popular. This was the height of its popularity. That year, it started in 2011. 2012, it started to exponentially grow. 2013 was the year they blew up. Like, This Is How You Don't Play got huge. And his reaction to This Is How You Don't Play have always been negative, including when he got quote unquote swatted. And then he blamed everybody who's ever done a detractor video on trying to get him killed. People were starting to completely see me in a negative light rather than a positive one for the first time ever in my entire YouTube existence. And so I didn't know how to handle it, and I handled it very negatively. And instead of kind of riding with it and laughing at it and maybe even making my own stuff, which would have been funny. Imagine if I did my own lampooning of myself. Uh, I just basically said, oh, it's a bunch of assholes. They're stealing my copyrighted content. It was a very bad attitude to have towards it. Yeah, that's, that's, he's been going with the same attitude until pretty much, I guess... When he called out, hold on, when he was called out by the side scrollers, he kind of changed his tune a little bit because they kind of pointed out that it was his reaction to the this is how we don't play that made him look like an idiot and not the this is how we don't play itself. Towards it, especially because this is where a lot of things were going. Like, if you really want, you know, look at it. This is how you don't play was an early version of React content, was it not? It's people reacting to the gameplay that I was putting out there. Now, admittedly, they were only reacting to the negative parts. They were not giving- How were they reacting to it, you fucking dumb fuck? The, the whole video, the whole This Is How We Don't Play is just his fucking content. Nobody talking over it, nobody commenting. Every once in a while, there's gonna be a comment that shows up on the screen. That's not fucking reacting. Me a fair shake and showing both sides that there was good content along with the bad. But it really was early react content and I didn't recognize it as a new trend or thing. I just thought it was bullshit that people would misrepresent me on purpose. And that was the, really the downward trend. This is where it started. Right here is really the downward trend beginning, you know, uh, from being a top gaming YouTube channel to uh, being on the... This, at this point in 2013, I kind of plateaued. I was doing a very slow decline. And then, of course, malicious activities made the channel basically get destroyed in the, the search algorithms, you know, the copyright strikes and everything. So it's uh, right. it's nothing that he did. It's somebody else that did all the harm. There we go. I'm just curious if I fast forward, I want to watch the whole video. Th this is, by the way, the guy who has owned up, quote unquote, has owned up to all the messed up shit he has done throughout the years. But now we're blaming everybody else because the channel failed. Yeah, but what do I talk about midway through? Week from streaming. So over the course of Monday and Tuesday, I'm going to upload those videos to DSP Gaming. I'm going to schedule them out tonight, actually, so that they go live. Oh, uh, this is just my have... schedule update. All right, I think we've seen enough of this. If anything, what you could see, definitely physically, I'm different. I sound the same, though, right? I would say maybe the difference is that now that I have this professional microphone. And, I've... and of course, even he is bored with his own fucking schedule. The moment the schedule comes up, he knows it's boring, so he skips it on purpose. Very entertaining, isn't it? I wonder how he would react to his own podcast. I had this for almost a decade, by the way. That I sound different because it's capturing my voice better. I talk a little bit differently now. I know that having done this for so long, I mean, this is 10 years ago. This is when I was only doing it for five years. Now that I'm t 15 years into it, I, I definitely, I think I sound better. I, I'm better at speaking. Uh, the inflection of my voice, no echo. Right? Here you hear the cave-like echo, cavernous echo. What about around. the background noise? What about all the shit that we get to hear in the background that could use, e easily be avoided by just putting in the slightest bit of effort? And also what irritates me is talking about 15 years like it's 
it's normal for somebody to take 15 years to make such little progress. Because it's like, he's talking about improving at speaking. Like, it takes you 15 years to get as good as this guy is. It's so fucking crazy. Me, right? <laughs> and definitely the film, the quality of the visuals, the background is much better now. Everything's better, you know. Which is this, just, this just devolves into just talking about how good he is. It's good that here this is the same guy that's too paranoid to reboot his computer because it might get fucked up. He's still the same guy who doesn't want to look up anything in regards to his streaming, such as OBS settings or Google, any kind of basic thing. He doesn't want to do his own thumbnails, doesn't want to edit videos. Yeah, maybe in another 20 years, he's going to start doing it. We are, uh, <clears throat> here we are 10 years later, and it's not like, wow, like he's exactly he, think, he thinks that speaking a lot makes you good at speaking. No, it's just saying things in a good way that makes you good at speaking. Just because it takes him 25 minutes to tell a story that could have been told in three minutes doesn't make him a good public speaker. The same where he's actually worse, you know. There's definitely been distinct improvements in the last 10 years. Um, I sound less congested. I mean, that's true, too. You know, I mean, some days I do sound really badly congested back then. Again, you know, again, it was different, different. Ca that's a camera I'm speaking to as opposed to me speaking right here into this mic that's right in front of me. Right. Production value has gone up. Quality of the content has gone up. Viewership and attention have gone way down. Isn't it funny how as I've improved over time, the attention on me dip? It's supposed to go the other way, isn't it? It's kind of funny. Anyway, let's continue. Over 60 million people here's, died in 2023. Here's, here's the thing, though. This this stream has taken a huge twist. Because um, now something kind of came up, so I have to leave. There's nothing bad, but I, I got to deal with it now. So um, I think this is a good moment to, to end the stream since the guy is about to start reacting now. Um, so I'm just going to go and handle my business in real life. Uh, it's, of course, uh, needless to say, it's nothing bad. I just got to go take care of it now. Because uh, I'm getting phone calls. So I don't know who's going to be covering the React. If you care, go check him out. Uh, but I got to leave. So I'll see you guys around. Peace out. Thanks, everybody, for swinging by. And I'll see you next time. Big ups.